once again for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. The college football Saturday presented by Kia Zara has a matchup of the Texas Tech Red Raiders and the Wolfpack of North Carolina State, ranked number 16 in the nation. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Myers, and welcome once again to College Football on Fox Sports Net. A rare matchup of the ACC in the Big 12, and last week it was Eli Manning making his way into West Texas. Today, we'll watch another incredible quarterback. Joining me now, my partner, Dave Lapman. I think when you talk about Philip Rivers of North Carolina State, Cliff Kingsbury of the Red Raiders, two of the finest in all of college football. Couldn't agree with you more, Joel. You know, and Philip Rivers, he's the most efficient quarterback in the nation, and he's tracking for a new record in that area. Why? Because he's so competitive. He's a natural-born leader. Guys gravitate toward him. He's got a dynamic presence in the huddle and at the line of scrimmage. And the thing about him, he's like a coach on the football field. He not only knows his assignments, he knows everybody else's assignments. On the flip side of that, Cliff Kingsbury, the thing that comes to mind about him is his toughness physically. I've seen him take some unbelievable shots, get right back up and compete and finish another play. And you look at him, he's quick-minded. He makes great decisions in a very, very timely fashion. He knows when, where, and how to throw the football. And he makes everybody else around him a better football player. And that's what quarterbacking is all about. We have two great ones today, Joel. When we spoke with the Wolfpacks head coach Chuck Amato yesterday, he said they didn't have a chance today unless they won the kicking game. They do have an edge going in in Terrence Holt. Holt is amazing. He's got an ACC record 12 block kicks. He's blocked four field goals, and he's blocked eight punts. Whenever... You have Texas Tech lining up to kick the ball today. They better look up number nine in the white jersey because Holt's going to be a factor. It should be a close one between two great quarterbacks. We're only minutes away from the opening kickoff. First, though, let's head from West Texas to our College Football Saturday studio show with Chris Rose, Kevin Winslow, and Artie Gigantino. Gentlemen. A touch of the lucky saddle, and Texas Tech hopes it'll pay off and knock it off a top 25 opponent. Welcome back once again to Lubbock. Joining us now, third member of our team, Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thanks, y'all. I want you guys to keep your eyes on this guy today, number 22, Greg Golden. He's the Deion Sanders of college football. Plays both ways. Offense lines up a tailback. Leading rusher for the Wolfpack on defense. He will play cornerback. This guy, does he have enough gas in his tank to go today? Can you do it, Greg? I believe as long as my teammates push me and uh, we push each other, we can we can do anything. There we go. It should be a good one today. North Carolina State against Texas Tech. A shootout in Lubbock, Texas. The kickoff coming up. Beautiful day in West Texas and a warm one at that. It's going to top out at just about 90 degrees. So incredible weather, especially if you're wearing a black uniform. It's got to be really feeling good in the sun in black. Chuck Amato in his third year at his alma mater. What a feeling for him to come back and succeed already the way he has. His record in his third season, 19-9 and nine already. And Mike Leach in his second year and his third year, in fact, as well third year as the head coach of the Red Raiders and he has definitely turned around this program. What a quarterback he's got out of New Braunfels. And that's San Antonio area, New Braunfels High School Cliff Kingsbury. The black home uniforms though, will that work against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech? If anybody's used to it though, Dave, they've got to be used to it. Well, they've been very efficient at home against uh, four head coach Mike Leach. They're 11 and 4 in Mike Leach's tenure here at Texas Tech in Lubbock. Welker, McCann, wait for the kickoff. It's going to hit. Will it find the end zone? Yes, for a touchback. That's a way to take Welker out of the return game. Angle it. And there is... Throwing the tacos or the, yes, the burritos or whatever, the Tostitos. And, well, if they're a little yellowish <laughs> on the corn side, it looks yeah. like a flag from here. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. In fact, they're nice and, nice and uh, soft because it's so warm. You know, a couple of uh, little beef in that. You know, I, well, I had one on the way over. I hate to admit it. Walking over to the ballpark today, had a sausage wrapped in a tortilla. Anything in a tortilla is good. So the ACC in the Big 12. Man, what a matchup of quarterbacks. It doesn't get any better in college football with a Saturday afternoon in West Texas. If you like offense, Kingsbury and Phillip Rivers. Kingsbury always spreading them out. Man on a play fake. The little dump off. He's got a first down. Do you believe it? Boy, it didn't take long, did it? He went to Preston Hartfield. Cliff Kingsbury already almost 1,000 yards over the first three games. Great percentage. And his skill guys, Munlin, Welker, Peters, Page, 
Francis. Loper up front. The two tackles with the experience. Keck and Loper. Cecil and Richards are the guards. And Dylan Gandy is the center. You know, Joel, in that first snap, they went two tight ends. Now they're more conventional for them. Three wideouts, but two tight ends the first play of the game. They say he got out of bounds, so Welker takes it to the boundary. Past the 40. He's got the first down on second and one. Well, we just saw the Kia Sarah first 11 offensively. Now, with the defensive unit, and are they going to be stretched today in the 4-3? Price, Hall, Martin, and Winston up front. The linebackers, some interesting assignments for these guys. Pollard, Burnett, and Thomas. And a lot of backpedaling for Reed Hudson in particular. Maddox and Holt are the safeties. Terrence Holt, he's the big playmaker in the secondary. His older brother's had a pretty decent start to his pro career as well. Torrey Holt. No question. From the 42, Kingsbury on a double move. Oh. Just off the fingertips. Trying to get it to Mickey Peters. And he had him available. Yep. He was in single coverage with Julius Patterson. And just off the fingertips, just overthrew him, Joel. And, you know, the, the play before that, they got the ball to Welker. And they're going to get the ball to him as many ways as they can, Joel, because he's, he's got over 160 yards a game in all-purpose yards, which is 17th in the country. It leads the Big 12, but is 17th in the nation. So they want to get him involved. They'll always spread the defense. This is almost like a tight formation for Texas Tech, though, on second and 10. Munlin, boy, did they get a seal to the outside. And jacket instead, Torrey and Henderson. The other running back in there. Mundlin in earlier. He takes it all the way to the 49-yard line, short of the first down. Finally, a little more than three. Henderson, a redshirt freshman from Gatesville, Texas. He won a Texas 3A state title for Gatesville High. So success before he ever got to the Red Raiders. I think there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment for North Carolina State. They haven't played the toughest competition to date to... to start with that 4-0 start, whereas Texas Tech has played Ohio State, the best team in the Big Ten, and they played Mississippi, one of the better teams in the SEC, so they played at a higher level of competition. They, they may be more ready. Out of the gun. Kingsbury with the pocket holding up. Making a miss to the 40-yard line. Ross Welker does it again. He is going to get a lot of touches. There's no doubt about that. Anywhere from 10 to 12 minimum per game for Welker. Son set up in the backfield that time out of the gun. And he had Hudson, his shadow, all over him. But it starts with the pass protection. And look at everybody wires their uh, their opponent. North Carolina State is wired at the line of scrimmage. And look at the vision, the separation. That's a nice pocket. Vision unimpeded for Kingsbury. Looking down the football field, he could open the paper and read the classified ads, have a cup of coffee, and enjoy himself back there. And North Carolina State can't let that happen too regularly because Kingsbury will pick them apart. From the 36 of North Carolina State, first and 10. Try reverse, and now a throwback reverse. Kingsbury is a man no. Instead, it's taken inside the 20-yard line. And with the first down, B.J. Simmons, the backup quarterback. He got it from Mickey Peters. That was quite a, quite a little play right there little reverse pass Kingsbury gets it back to his to his his backup quarterback Simmons and, and wa watch the action here watch watch King watch Simmons come out and Kingsbury throws him the football and, and really if he'd let him a little bit made him slow up to catch the football if he let him a little bit maybe a touchdown so a little razzle dazzle early out of the Red Raiders from the 18 Kingsbury first time he's seen some heat now he can run with the football what does he have some real estate for the 10 he's got a first and goal going out of bounds at the five yard line he broke away from Andre Maddox to get the necessary yardage for a first and goal well Joe I think right now North Carolina State's defensive football team is a little overwhelmed with the size and speed of Texas Tech and and you can't lose contain and, and took an inside rush right there, the blitzer did, and Kingsbury, once he saw the contain was lost, there was nobody on the edge. And talked about his ability to make quick decisions. Very quick-minded quarterback, tucked it and got very positive yards immediately. Anderson in the backfield along with the H-back, Clay McGuire. They'll give it to Henderson. Nifty moves inside the two. They try to strip it away. It'll be second and goal from close to the one. Terrence Holt held him up and waited for some assistance on that play. And this is where Texas Tech sized the offensive line, averaging almost 320 pounds per man, second largest in the NCAA. The only line that has bigger average body per player is Fresno State. So 
That should be a factor here in this goal line scenario. You remember what Jack Amato said. We know they'll be able to throw the ball. Can't let them run, though. And they have been effective when they've tried on the ground. Let's see what happens at the line of scrimmage here. Who gets under who? It'll be a toss for Henderson. Making a miss at the five. He's in. Still Texas down. He called it exactly right, Joel. North Carolina State, Julius Patterson was there to make the tackle at the five-yard line, but he couldn't he couldn't finalize. And what uh, Chuck Amato said, we have to beat them in rushing the football in yards after catch. And Texas Tech made defenders miss after the catch during the drive, and they made people miss. So yards after first contact in the running game and yards after catch were big in that drive. So an 80-yard drive to start the day. Robert Treese tries to make it a seven-point lead for the Red Raiders. Now, what a start for Texas Tech trying to knock, knock off a top-20 team. So Henderson with the score. Kingsbury pushing all the right buttons. And the Big 12 on top of the ACC early. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Cero. One company. Countless solutions by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Nissan and your Nissan dealer. By the new Gillette Mach 3 Turbo for the closest shave with less irritation even against the grain. And by Campbell's Chunky Soup, soup that eats like a meal. The Red Raider, the heart of campus. As Sterling Hicks goes back deep along with Gregory Gibson. It is going to be Gregory Golden, in fact, bringing it back. Past the 10 to the 20. Good coverage downfield, though. And the Red Raiders stuff him at the 23. Well, Phillips Rivers has been absolutely amazing this year for North Carolina State. Nine over two touchdown to interception ratio. And he's only a junior. Golden, Moyer, Cotchery, Peterson, and Burton, his targets at the skill positions and up front. Colmer and Kustra outside, then Riggs and Locklear with Brandon Sanders, former walk-on, getting the start due to an injury at center and doing a good job over the first four. Josh Brown starts at tailback. So not Golden, not McLennan, we'll see, but Josh Brown instead. They slide the tight end. And Rivers ready to throw on first down and going for the bundle. He wants Cotchery. What a grab by Cotchery inside the 30. He's got it to the 28-yard line. Beating Ryan Acock as he had to hold up slightly for the football. But Boy, he matched up against the safety. He sure did. Cotchery made the adjustment to the football. Acock couldn't. And uh, Philip Rivers says, you know, they went on the big drive. We're going to come right back in a hurry. And he, got, he likes to get the ball downtown. You saw the hitch in the delivery that everybody's talking about. Drops the football. But, you know, when he puts the ball in the air, he puts it in a spot where his receivers have the best chance to catch it and not the defender. Nice job by Rivers there. Could be an unbelievable shootout today. Oh, man. As it's down inside the 28-yard line of Texas Tech. They give it on the end around. Devontae Edwards bumped out of bounds. Took a shot by Jose Leo Hansen on the corner of the 25. Gain of about three on first and ten. Defensively, Adell Duckett, McKinney, and Anderson, along with Aaron Hunt, the big rush in. And their experience on the outside up front in the 4 3. Smith, Turner, and Flugin, the middle linebacker. He's a Buckus Award candidate. Sander and Hansen, who just made the stop on the edges. And Acock and Pierce are the safeties in the Kia Sarah. Starting 11 defensively for the Red Raiders. Well, Hunt's got to have a big day. He's got to get heat on the quarterback from the outside spot. Josh Brown again the single on second and about seven. Brown slowed down. Penetration that time. Adell Duckett turned him in. He didn't make the stop, but he put him off balance, didn't he? Well, you know, the, the big, big factor for North Carolina State is, is the interior play, the two guards in the center. Let's take a look here. Look, look at the penetration. You know, when, when a running back sees a, a black helmet coming into his backfield, he has to make his first cut in his own backfield. That's a big disruption. And McKinney actually stuffed it a little bit before Duckett could get involved. And so Rivers facing a third down and a timeout early. McKinney was a former defensive end, slid inside now to play defensive tackle. You saw that first step penetration. Extraordinary. So four minutes gone by. We've got a time out of the field. Chuck Amato squad's going to talk it over. What will they do when we come back? Third and seven. The Red Raider 25. 
Phillip Rivers, the junior from Athens, Alabama, with a key early play from the 25 of Texas Tech. Welcome back, love it. It's a 7-0 lead for the Red Raiders, third and seven, an empty backfield. And trouble coming for Rivers, has to dump it. Heat came, and it was Flugents, the middle linebacker, who got to him first. And he blew a tire. David Rivers, they uh, or Philip Rivers, I should say, they, they ripped his left shoe right off his foot. So Flugents, uh, this is a defense that, uh, that uh, defensive coordinator Greg McMakin has had a very big dose of success with when he was in the Seattle Seahawks organization. And he, and he brought his, his middle linebacker, Flugents, who's averaging 20 tackles a game, brought him as a down lineman and blitzed. And Texas Tech calls a timeout, but he had, he had uh, North Carolina State's offensive line very confused with that configuration. You know, he, what happens, Joel, is as an offensive lineman, you have 51 flugents as a middle linebacker, and you're accounting for him and your protections as a middle linebacker. All of a sudden, he lines up as a down lineman, and there's another guy at linebacker. So you have to recognize positions and not numbers. If you get hung up on numbers, you're in trouble. So now field goal try coming up for Herbert, who's already three of four on the year. Got our virtual coach of college football use instant replay. There's been discussion on that. The only problem with that, not every game is televised with that many cameras to begin with. Same in the NFL, though. I mean, you, you have some games that don't have as many cameras as uh, as others do. The, you know, you have the, the number one uh, broadcast teams in the NFL get more cameras than the than the eight eight number eight teams do. And I agree with you, Joel. There is an inconsistency there, but I'm in favor of a replay that can correct a very, very obvious big error that cost you a football game. I like the way the NFL is doing it now. If it's if it's indisputable evidence. You know, you got to reverse it. If it's not, you don't. But, you, you know, take care of the big, big glaring errors. Now Herbert tries to get him on the board. He's three for four. How about four for five? Yes. And the field goal from 42 yards away, the longest of the season by 10 for Austin Herbert, the junior from Cary, North Carolina. So a four-point deficit for Chuck Amato's squad. And it's interesting when we talk to Chuck Amato about his quarterback, Phillip Rivers, it seemed like a lot of what he was saying was what we heard earlier in the day from Mike Leach. Both quarterbacks, Phillip Rivers and Cliff Kingsbury, the starters for the Red Raiders and the Wolfpack, their dads were their high school coaches. So they come in and they have such a great presence and a great feel for the game to begin with. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they, they grow up around the game. So, you know, the film study on, on both of these guys is, is phenomenal and exceptional. They're great role models in that regard. I mean, as, as a son of a coach, high school coach, you know what it takes to prepare to play football mentally and physically. And it's just, it, that, that gets contagious. I and mean, the rest of the teammates see how hard those guys work mentally and physically to get ready to play, and they follow suit. You know, you can lead football teams on and off the field, and both of these guys do. So a 7-3 ball game early in West Texas this October. It's going to be filled with spellbound days. Mystical night, sports' biggest month, comes to a box. Baseball's division series kicks off. Up to 125 hours of October's magical matchups. The thrilling NFL showdowns with great baseball playoff activity. No other network is going to broadcast more sports in a single month this year. The magical matchups beginning October 1st right here on Fox. I can't wait myself. Ivory McCann waiting back, and they're going to pooch it away from McCann and Welker. Upman takes it, and a good return past the 35. Bringing it back, it's Thomas Bachman. He's got it close to the 40-yard line, giving the 39. There is a flag down to the play. Well, there's a little little fade pattern right there. You, you get a matchup that, that's favorable. Now, now Checking, uh, checking this action out. Pretty good deal. You have a, a situation where you have your rover in position to make a play. Julius Patterson, he can't make the tackle. Call against the Red Raiders. Will deny them exceptional field position. A personal foul at the tail end of the play. Because the flag came about, oh, 10 yards downfield. The spot of the tackle. So Texas Tech, instead of their own 39, they'll have it at the 24. 15 yards the wrong way for the Red Raiders. So Kingsbury set to go after an 80-yard drive to start the day. And you just saw that final conversion, the two-yard run, the touchdown by Torian Henderson. 
Kingsbury, good size. He'll play on Sundays just like Rivers at 6'4", 215 pounds. Senior from San Antonio suburb, New Braunfels. Setting up the screen. Man, off the fingertips of Henderson. Could have gone for big yardage, too. Just a little bit low with the delivery. Couldn't make the, the low catch. You know, below his knees is a, a tough catch to, uh, to make. Noxie, what's the latest with the injuries downstairs? All right, real quick, Joe. Right now, looking at the middle linebacker spot, not in the game. Antonio Burnett out of the game, in the locker room. They're going to put a soft cast on his thumb, so a big blow right now to the NC State defense. You're right about mm -hmm. that, Burnett. They're a four-year starter, a senior from Warner Robins, Georgia. He was second on the team at stops last year, second and ten for Kingsbury. What, does he have all day? And now he can turn the corner. Good yardage. He's got a first down across the 35. He beat the big end on the outside, and once he got to the boundary, he got a little block as well from Wes Welker. Well, and in, in, in talking to Mike Leach, to compare and contrast the three quarterbacks that he's coached, Kingsbury here at Texas Tech, Tim Couch at Kentucky, and uh, Josh Heifel at Oklahoma, he said that Kingsbury runs the best. He's got the quickest feet. He's got the, the most foot speed in general, and he showed it right there. And as always, when you have a good... Run on the edge, a wide receiver down the field blocking people. Kingsbury on first down. Quick turn in. Man, what a grab. Anton Payne making the most after the catch. Pass the midfield stripe to the 49. Now you were talking about the quarterbacks that Mike Leach has had an opportunity to work with. The presence of a big Tim Couch, a quiet guy. Just He wanted to take people on. Like, I'm going to throw it past that safety. Exactly. And Heupel, analytical, almost like a mathematician. And Clint Kingsbury, a combination of the two, when he described Cliff Kingsbury, he said, great work ethic. He called him a real student of the game and connects very well with the entire team. Boy, great touch on that pass, wasn't it? Welker making a miss and close to another first down. It's the yards after the catch. Exactly. The key for Texas Tech. Yeah, they were Texas uh, or, or North Carolina State wanted to outrush Texas Tech, and they wanted to get more yards after catch in Texas Tech. And right now, it's not working out. Texas Tech is doing a good job of making the first guy miss. You know, when a receiver catches a ball in the open field, he turns into a running back. And Welker does a heck of a job because he's a great return guy. He's returned four punts in his career. They Touchdown. get the first down. So first and 10 inside the 35. Henderson again. He's a powerful kid at 5'9", 190. The redshirt freshman from Gatesville, Texas. They've got another bull of a back. They use Foy Mullen. We'll see him later at 5'10", 230. They don't have many running backs on this program. They don't have any real tight ends to begin with either. And, and really the offensive line, Joel, the size advantage, 320 pounds a man thereabouts is, is taking a toll on North Carolina State. And they need the middle linebacker for net back. Henderson Perry, that little fake on the hitch over to the outside, didn't fool anybody. Best penetration of the day by the Wolfpack. Holloway in there early. Well, they get a flag on the, on the play. Also George Anderson, but as you mentioned, did they leave early? Yeah, were they, were they in the neutral zone before the snap of the football? I mean, there was great penetration. Or did, uh, or did uh, yeah, Texas Tech's moving backwards based on that penetration? Did Texas Tech up front, desperation move, trying to stop the, the blitz and the pressure, hold and take somebody down? It looks like Tech is going to get called for that. Illegal use of hands or a hold. a loss of about three or four, so instead of second and 13, 14, make it first and 20. Back to the 43. And that's what North Carolina State's going to have to do. They can't line up in just two gap, take Texas Tech on right down their noses. They're going to have to move, blitz, stunt, and see if their quickness and speed can ne negate Texas Tech's size up front. Kingsbury spreading the ball around for his 48 yards. Whoa. And again, the pocket holds up well. But the, can't make the first man miss that time. So he sent it outside, finding his wide receiver. He got it to Carlos Francis. Good play by Lamont Reed. And that's what they're going to have to do is get him in the open field because they spread it with so many different options. Well, what North Carolina State did there, Joel, the pocket held up because they only rushed three and they dropped eight into coverage because it was first and a bunch. Now it's second and a bunch. So they, they played percentages, and they just took every possible throwing zone away from Kingsbury by dropping eight into coverage. Only again, two. Five different tech receivers already with at least one grab. Kingsbury in trouble. 
He's got some room. He'll take off. And he's already close to field goal range. Out of bounds. Near the original first down marker. He'll go inside the 32. And it's still going to bring up third to about nine. Kingsbury really doesn't want to run the football. I mean, when you see him, when he's tucking the football and, and running, he's still got his eyes down the football field to deliver a throw. But uh, North Carolina State is, is saying, look, you're not going to beat us by running the football. You're going to beat us by throwing it down the field. So we're going to give you some lanes if you want to run it and take a chance on getting knocked around. So far, Kingsbury's winning. James Fitch is in there, the linebacker. Kingsbury spreads it. With four wide receivers in the set, two to each side. They pick up the blitz, but Kingsbury's in trouble. And out of field goal range, sacked in the backfield. Sheldon Lewin got in, the young man from the Bronx in New York City. He's a junior at 6'4", 275 pounds. And he showed uh, some great closing speed there. I mean, they talk about the speed this football team has. Watch from the backside. Watch him come. Unblocked. He better get there. An assignment error from, for Texas Tech up front. You have to block from the inside out. And, uh, you know, you got to block down as an offensive tackle. You can't block the guy outside. you got to block the guy inside of you. And as a result of that assignment error, Sheldon Lewin came in untouched and got himself a quarterback sack. The Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Week, Clinton Greathouse, tries to put it out of bounds inside the 10. Angles it over to the near side. He had four inside the six last week, and he does it again. Unbelievable. How good is this kid? Pretty good job by Haverty as well to get down there in position to catch that uh, bounce before it goes into the end zone. Great effort on, on both ends. Now, Chuck Amato said to have a chance, they had to win the kicking game. And right now, the edge of the kicking game, it belongs to the Red Raiders of Texas Tech, just like the scoreboard. College football Saturday presented by Kia Seria brings you back to the warm West Texas. Well, the Texas Tech Red Raiders draped in red just a little bit. And their players, how about black on a 90-degree sunny day? They've got North Carolina State pen back. North Carolina State took a chance. They didn't put anybody back to cover that kick. Could have grabbed it at about the 10. Instead, they'll start at their own two. Moyer and Brown in the backfield. It'll be a play fake. Rivers with time. Flutters it out. And what a nice grab by Cotri to make a miss again after the catch. He's got a first down and a flag. He was popped at the end of the play. You talk about a big play now. This is going to be after the mark off of about 15 yards. Well, you got a flag back at the line of scrimmage as well. North Carolina State's offensive lineman took a late shot on a Texas Tech down lineman on E.J. Whitley. And uh, I think I think North Carolina State's going to be going to be penalized as well but a lot of confidence in rivers you're in your own end zone he fires a strike boy is he accurate he gets it exactly where he has to to make a play but at, at the end of the play at the line of scrimmage there was a penalty and then there was a penalty on the sideline out of bounds and you have to know where you are on the football field i don't know if these will offset you got personal fouls i think going both ways might be a redo got a clip you got a clip in the offensive line up front and a personal foul on Texas Tech. Well, Hal Dowden's microphone is not working. It is going to work out well, though, for North Carolina State. And after all is said and done, they're going to have a first down. Let's see if they move it away, though. The market off half the distance to the goal, the first penalty. And then, and then the 15. 15 yards on the personal foul. Right. So first and 10, and now breathing room. But what about the guts of Chuck Amato with Phillip Rivers on a play fake? And as he told us yesterday, the kid handles the pocket really well. And what did he say? It was a few nights ago. He was ready to wrap things up, and he went down the hall and yep. thought somebody was in the back. And it was Rivers watching film. Well, the thing about Rivers is he's just like David Carr. He's married. He's got a young a young child. He's got a like about a two or three month old daughter. This guy's accountable to more than football. He's got people dependent on him, and, and I tell you, he answers the call every single time. Rivers wants to work out of the shotgun this time. Six five two thirty five pounder. Emptied it in a hurry, didn't he? And here as he released it. Good pressure in the backfield again. Adele Duckett, the sophomore from Mineral Wells, Texas, got to the quarterback. And also in there. Uh, watch what happens uh, in the interior of the line. No place for Rivers to, to step up. The pocket's collapsing on him a little bit. And, uh, yes, uh, getting in a hand on the football is Duckett. Duckett 
When he was in high school, he averaged 30, 30 points a game as a basketball player, and he won the state championship, and the shot put was 61-foot heave at 220 pounds. Very, very explosive man. At the top of the screen here, explosive. Second and 10, they flood the zone. Good job, Contrary making a miss again. What a nifty move across the 30. Contrary beating Ozalio Hansen on the edge and he gets the first down across the 30 to the 32 what moves by the junior from Birmingham well Hunt set a record uh, last year watch the inside stunt uh, but it's a quick it's, it's a quick little uh, three-step drop and the ball's out but Hunt has had 20 sacks in the last two seasons but look at that the moves after the catch one two three it took three guys to bring him down and he made two guys miss so five of this 11 defensive players had to get involved and Hunt a little frustrated because he's beat his, def his offensive lineman the line of scrimmage. the ball was gone quickly it'll be McClendon's first carry a little razzle dazzle action as they go to the wide receiver Hicks and it doesn't work so Hicks taking it deep in the backfield brought the pursuit with him and he stopped behind the line for a loss of about four well Hunt runs like a linebacker even though he's a down lineman here he is working off the top and he's very disciplined stay at home makes the read now he's involved in the play that's a good play right there you know what that's a tackle for loss okay that's just like a quarterback sack quarterback sacks are the, are the sexy statistic but you know what? A tackle for loss sets the offense off schedule just as effectively. That's a big play right there behind the line of scrimmage. Rivers with a loss of four. Second and long, six minutes to play in a wild start to a contest. After the play fake, it's Cotterie again. And is it Burton instead? Yeah, it looked like it was. Tight it was end. the tight end. The senior from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, 87, not 82, 6'4", 260 pounder. His head coach said, He's as physical as any tight end in the country. Well, he transferred from West Virginia, and then he's got uh, as many knockdown blocks. Here he is right here, right at the end of the huddle. As many knockdown blocks and pancake blocks as the big offensive lineman. Well, do they try to hammer it here, Dave, on third and a couple? A little more than one, almost two. McClendon sets up in a deep tailback spot. And an audible by Rivers. It'll be McClendon. Made a miss in the backfield, spinning all the way, past the 50, wow. almost broke it. Man, what a job. Touchdown saving tackle, Raymond Bears the free safety. Well, what a job by T.A. McClendon. Yeah, he did that all, all on his own, and he blew a tire as well. Those left shoes keep falling off. McClendon going to the sideline, holding his shoe in his right hand that's off his left foot. But Lamont Anderson, the big down lineman for Texas Tech, got penetration. And, and I thought he was going to throw it for a loss, but just a great cut. Boy, he planted that left foot, T.A. McClendon, got up the football field, and now it's just here he is being special. I mean, this is a true freshman who, who rushed for 170 touchdowns, a record, high school record in his career. 178 overall, as you mentioned, 170 on the ground. Amazing. It'll be Josh Brown this time. Good moves. Josh Brown with 11 for a first down inside the 35. Pierce made the hit. Deep in the secondary, though, it's all the way to the 33. Why do I get the feeling this early in the game, the last one with it's going to be the winner? Yeah, I'll tell you, Chuck Amato's liking what he sees here now because he's getting some yards after after catch as well as out, out rushing Texas Tech right now. And let's see, when you when you tackle people, you get your, oh, that's a face mask right there. You get your hand up around the, the headgear, and, and, and very, very fortunately, Acock wasn't called because he could have been. From the 33, first and 10. The drive started back at the two-yard line of North Carolina State. With his four-point lead for Texas Tech. Rivers with a quick stop. And the catch inside the 30. Rosalio Hansen jolting. Cotchery, who has been a favorite target early, and that's not a surprise. I think that North Carolina State has adjusted to the physical nature and the speed of this football game now. Well, tomorrow night on Sunday Night Fights, the WABO Heavyweight Championship between former two-time world champion Tim Witherspoon and Lou Saravisi. Winner is step closer to a possible world title shot against WBO champion Vladimir Klitschko at Sunday Night Fights tomorrow night. Six o'clock local time on Fox Sports Net. Lap my know you're all over the fights on that one. I'm telling you. Moving nicely. Boy, did he work the pocket well. Rivers finding Devontae Edwards buying some time. He wanted to go downfield. That was not his first option. Well, that's the thing. Uh, another quick-minded quarterback. You know, you, you talk about quarterbacks with quick releases, quick feet. You get some football games. And
Jackson Park minded. Joe McCain didn't have the longest in the world. What did he have the longest ever seen? These quarterbacks are cut a bit off. So now third, a little less than two. Need to go close to the 18. McClendon the single. T.A. should be able to get it, and he will. And check that down to the 20. Needed to go inside the 23. They'll say his knee was down to the 21. First and 10 anyway. North Carolina State. They have really had a balanced offense on this drive. They sure have. And T.A. McClendon, T.A. in high school stood for touchdown anytime, anywhere. <laughs> I mean, man, he just was a scoring machine. And uh, he, he's coming off a shoulder separation. And he's now he's gotten back to uh, where he's got strength in that shoulder. He can lower those pads and hit people. So now first and ten. Last time, North Carolina State had the ball. It's stalled. They settled for a 42-yard field goal. They punch him on the wide side. And that's where they go. Nice catch and run. All the way inside the 10-yard line, Devontae Edwards, a sophomore from Chapel Hill, brought down from behind by Ryan Acock. It's almost like that little bubble out there. Yep. And another first and 10. How about first and goal to the nine? College Football Saturday Triple Header presented by Kia Sarah will continue later today. Bulldogs of Fresno State taking on the Pac-10's Oregon State Beavers. Then the Cowboys of Wyoming squaring off against 13 Frank Washington. It all starts at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. So plenty of football later today. And this is the first of three. Get comfortable. Sit back in that lazy boy. First and goal from the nine, McClendon again. Two tight ends set with a single to each side. McClendon, big move. Breaking tackles, really take it. Yes, yeah. touchdown North Carolina State. Wow. And a wolf pack with the lead. You talk about finishing a run, Joel. You can't arm tackle this guy. I mean, McClendon has got some natural power, and he finishes everything hard. Take a look at the offensive line getting it started. A little cutback was designed to go between the left guard and the left tackle. He cut it back and just ran through the tackles of Texas Tech. A little swing, fake the swinging gate here for the extra point. They're going to line up and, and go conventional. Chuck Amato's got a bag full of tricks now. So now to go up by three. Herbert splits the uprights. Yeah, there is the flag down to the play. Looks like it's going to go, Texas Tech is, is clapping, and it's going against North Carolina State. It's like it was holding on the edge. They called holding, so this this uh, extra point is going to be from a, a deeper distance than the conventional chip shot. A little leverage play as he tried to, he wanted, wanted to use one of his players to block it. Watch the jumper here. Watch what happens. Watch how North Carolina State attacks him. And they they call holding right. Yeah, he, he took one high, grabbed his leg, and just deposited him unceremoniously. Uh, Sean Locklear. You know, you can't tackle him when he's airborne like that. He didn't use a teammate to jump up. He jumped on his own, grabbed him, and threw him down. So it's going to be a 30-yard try, and it's just inside the upright. Not exactly automatic that time on the extra point. Still it works at North Carolina State puts together a 98-yard drive. Stunned crowd in Lubbock, Texas. As Ivor McCann waits for the kickoff. And it's going to be another pooch over to the far side. Should hit out of bounds, and it will. So Texas Tech will get it at their own 35-yard line. Well, that's respect. North Carolina State does not want to allow Texas Tech's return to get underway. They're trying to directional pooch kick it, and if it goes out of bounds, so be it. Here we go, Raiders. Here we go. So they'll make it official with the call. Then it'll be first and 10 from the 35. 98 yards on that last drive by North Carolina State. A nice mix of run and pass. They didn't have to depend only on Rivers. Boy, 11 plays. I mean, that's, uh, and they mixed it up nicely. You're, you're right, Joel. And, you know, Chuck Amato was worried about the long field. Well, it couldn't be much longer. Three on the field side, the wide side. Four wide receivers overall for Kingsbury. Had the play underneath, and now goes for Welker. What a grab by Welker. 
Took it away at the 47. Took it away from Marcus Hudson to shadow. He beat his shadow that time. Marcus Hudson all over him. That's just a great play by the receiver. Just outfought him for the football. You know, a lot of confidence Kingsbury has in his receiver. And, and well, that's great coverage. I mean, stri Hudson's right there, just rakes at it, tries to strip it out of there, and Welker shows more strength in his hands and wrists. Out of the gun. Kingsbury trying to get his man on a double move. It'll be second and ten when we come back. Time for a Dr. Pepper game break, though, with Chris Rose. Let's find out the latest in college football. Chris. All right, Joe, in case you missed it last night, Marshall's quarterback Byron Leftwich continues to put up Heisman-like numbers. More than 400 yards last week and a loss to Virginia Tech. Here he connects with Josh Davis from 36 out. Threw for 340 and two scores and a win over Central Florida. And guys, he certainly has pro material written all over him, doesn't he? Kingsbury scrambling, buying time, working out of the Noah huddle. He's done all this on his own. And now he turns a negative into a positive and goes out of bounds. Close to a first down. He may have it, actually. Inside the 37. I believe he does. That's amazing. Well, he's showing elusiveness. I think North Carolina State wasn't aware that he had. You know, he seems like he's got eyes in the back of his head today. He's got good pocket presence and elusiveness and his capability within the pocket, but he's showing decent foot speed when he gets to the edge as well. Well, as Coach told us, uh, Mike Leach, who has worked with most Josh Heupel, and Tim Couch at Kentucky said Kingsbury definitely has the, the better feet among the threesome. The escape ability. Here's the first down. Hey, he's not here. He's not here. Henderson making a miss with some empty moves. Oh, ball. The ball comes free. Loose ball. North Carolina State ripped it away. Who's got it now? The bottom of the pile, the 33. Wolfpack recover. Well, he, was, he was already done, but he tried to get the extra inch or two. Yeah, I, I thought they might have blown the whistle because he was getting tackled and looked like he was stood up. And, and, and he was stood up, and the ball's ripped out of there late. It looks like Holt ripped it out of there late. And I, I thought the forward progress may have been stopped, but no whistle. And Holt kept going, and that's a big, big takeaway. North Carolina State now plus five on the season. Texas Tech minus two, and that's another thing that Chuck Amato and North Carolina State wanted to do was win the turnover battle, and they're one up right now. Three-point lead for the Wolfpack, and they've got it back. Now going strong side, almost like an unbalanced line. Over to the boundary, the short side. McClendon following the unbalance. Not much available. With all that power over there, past the 35 to the 37, a game of only three. Tripped up by Adel Duckett. Now, remember, this guy's a true freshman, 18 years old, big, big future ahead of him. I mean, he was a man amongst boys in high school. Now the playing field's a little bit more even, but he's still got some special qualities. And I, I think the thing that he does is he always delivers the hit and finishes his runs. They don't wait anymore like they used to, do they, Dave? Oh, absolutely. You're ready right out of high school, you play. Yep, because if they're good, they're gone early, so you might as well get something out of them. Especially at the skill positions. On the play fake, Rivers in trouble, the tight end, Burt. But he's covered immediately past the 40 to the 41 by the outside backer, Mike Smith, the sophomore from right here in Lubbock. North Carolina State anticipated getting the tight end involved more in the passing game today because Texas Tech plays a lot of cover, too, with safeties helping corners over the top. That means the tight end has spaces to work and get open underneath. And they're getting the ball to him early in this football game. Big third down. Red Raider fans coming to their feet in the near sideline. 10-7 lead early in the final minute of the opening 15 for the Wolfpack, the number 16 team of the nation. McClendon choked off. Won't quit. Gets the first down. What an effort. And the guy that he ran through the arms of was Flugents, the guy who number four in the nation the last two years and number one in the Big 12 in terms of making tackles. But he was there to make the tackle short of the first down, but he could not wrap him up. And that's the surest tackler that, that Texas Tech uh, presents out there in the football field. Watch him right here in the middle. He makes the read, scrapes over the top. He's coming downhill, and he's there to make the play. He just can't finish. Look at the cut. Boom. McClendon cuts. Flugents lurches out into space. First down. Lowered those shoulder pads nicely. That's he, a heck of a back. You know who he reminds me of, even though he's a little bit taller. Cedric Benson is a little bit taller, but that's the kind of running back he is. Yep. It takes more than one to get this kid. Rivers popping it over the middle. Nice grab, Sterling Hicks. Short game. 
but a high percentage play and a little curl in right at the midfield strike. So a very productive start for the Wolfpack on the road in Big 12 territory after a shocking beginning. Trailing five minutes into the game by seven after an 80-yard drive to start the contest by Texas Tech. So that's the end of the first 15 minutes of play. 10-7 lead for North Carolina State in this matchup, the ACC and the Big 12. You're watching College Football Saturday presented by Kia Serra on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Lubbock. Our Gillette Mach 3 Turbo Game Summary. Spit that out quickly. North Carolina State leading by three after the first quarter of play. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, and Jim Knox down on the sideline. And North Carolina State battling back after an early deficit. Boy, you like the way Amato brings his team on the road, don't you, Dave? Oh, you sure do. And look at that's not going to hurt Rivers' pass efficiency. 80% completions for 105 yards. And then McClendon balancing it out, averaging seven yards a pop on the ground. Nice, nice offense. Hermetically sealed in a mayonnaise jar. Jim Knox is downstairs. So I wonder if he's spoiling yet in this 90 degree weather. I'm telling you, Knoxie, if there's anybody that's in shape, Knoxie could run a marathon in this weather. <laughs> second and five, first snap of the second quarter for the Wolf back to the midfield strike. McClendon, huge hole. He goes backwards for an extra five, and he's got a first down inside the 40. Jim Knox. All right, Joe, you talk about a hot one. First off, Chuck Amato, head coach of North Carolina State, came over to his defense, said, great going, guys. Now, look at this. Only one fan on the NC State sidelines. Temperatures continue to rise on the field, going above the 100-degree mark. It could be not the last team that has the ball, but the last team standing. It's going to be a hot one today here. Man, look at that heat rising off that turf, Knoxie. I'll tell you what, you better change your shoes, get some, uh, some cool stuff going over there. Just better to warm the tortillas down in West Texas. That's all I know. <laughs> First and ten inside the 40. Again, Rivers out of the gun. And he's got three on the wide side. That was a bullet. He's got a first down or close to a first down. Taking the shot. That was Sterling Hicks again, who's not a, well, he's not a heavy guy at 6'2", 175 pounds. Well, you talk about Rivers at 6'5", Joel, but where he throws the football from is about 5'10". Watch him drop the football. A lot of people in the NFL are, are, don't like this hitch. And look where he, he releases it down by his shoulder pad <laughs> level. He drops it, so that 6'5", becomes, you know, 5'10", release point. But I think that's a little uh, overrated because you don't throw over guys normally. You throw between people you anyway. Got it. And we didn't have the pit play. We didn't have the line. We don't know if he had to go around a guy. Exactly. They said contrary in motion. And a dead ball fall coming up. False start yep. on a second and a yard. And you know what? It's interesting. When Chuck Amato was with us last night, he said, hey, I watched Monday Night Football, and I saw Rich Gannon. He threw from all kinds of angles for the Oakland Raiders, didn't he? Right. He and, was and, absolutely right. And I played with a guy named Doug Flutie for a couple of years, and uh, Doug Flutie's five nine and a half tops, and he drops down and throws by his shoulder. So he's releasing from about five six, and he makes plays. Guys like that, though, with that, that size problem, you have to get him out of pocket a little bit. And they do that with Rivers, but not because he's he's short and not because they don't have confidence in throwing motion, but just to change it up to make it tougher to find him. You, if you keep a quarterback in the pocket every snap, those defensive linemen close in and they have an aiming point. Change the launch point. Rig into the wide side for Rivers looking in that direction. And now almost like a little shovel for the first down. He's got it inside the 25. Boy, this that being resourceful to Sterling Hicks. Little shot boy. Yeah, he's he's the great improviser. I mean, he'll he'll make a play any way he can. He'll throw off his back foot. He'll throw as he's falling down before he hits the ground. This kid is just very special. I mean, he he understands. The thing that he knows, Joel, is exactly where everybody's supposed to be at all times on the football field. So, you know, he may be unorthodox, but believe me, Number 17 right there, Rivers knows what he's doing every single snap. This guy started back to State 33. They've got it outside the 20 for the Texas Tech. Looking to add to those three pair of lead. McClendon spinning, breaking tackles. Well, wow. quit again. Close to a first down. He's got nine inside the 15. Finally, Bulldog down from behind by Ricky Sander. What a load. Man, I'll tell you what, this kid is special now. You know, he just keeps his pad level is, is always fantastic. He's got good body lean. Obviously, a strong legged guy. You know, you're not going to arm tackle him. He doesn't give you a, a real, real big hitting surface at, at 5'11. He's a, he's a special player. I would imagine backs like T.A. McClendon don't mind playing on a carpet and a real new carpet here on the home of the
the Red Raiders. Starting to wear Texas Tech down. That defense been out for a lot of snaps. Josh Brown in there looking for the first down. And they stand him up short. Maybe even lost about a foot or two. It'll be third, a little more than a yard. Now Inside the 15. What they have to do, Joel, defensively is limit this to nothing more than a field goal opportunity. Then it's still a one-score game. If North Carolina State punches it in there for a touchdown, all of a sudden they've got big, big momentum going on their side of the ball. And even though it's been a while, don't forget, this would be points off a turnover. Yep. After the fumble by Torian Henderson. It was ripped away by Holt. Big playmaker Holt, and he made another one. So a timeout has been called, the second used by Phillip Rivers at North Carolina State. We were talking about the delivery of Rivers, and when we asked Mike Leach about him, he said, hey, there's scarcity of quarterbacks in the NFL. There's no doubt in my mind Rivers and his quarterback, Kingsbury, will be playing on Sunday. Yep. Third short for State when we come back. They love the Red Raiders in <laughs> Lubbock, Texas. Uh, welcome back to West Texas. Joel Myers, Dave Latt, Jim Knox. Uh, third and about two. They get their horse back in there. McClendon lunging. He's going to be right at the marker. Well, decision time for Chuck Amato. Do you go safe and kick the field goal if they are short? Or do you show the confidence in the offensive line to hammer it in there fourth and less than a yard and keep the drive going? Big decision for him on the road. I think he might kick it if it is short. But he said, his comment was, we're going to play this game to win. We're not going to play this game not to lose. So he may decide the offensive line's coming off the ball well. And I just got a little bit that I have to get done. Big decision for Chuck Amato. Which way is he going to go? Is he got confidence in the big hogs or is he going to kick it? And I think he's going to go. Chuck's saying, I got confidence in you guys. Well, Let's go after the it. The way has been running the football. And the offensive line coming off the ball well. Nothing fancy. Just inside zone stuff. Just double teaming the defensive lineman and rubbing off to that linebacker. And big play right here. He wants to really gamble. A little play fake with Phillip Rivers. Rivers hitting almost 70% of his passes coming in today. And he's 11 of 13 so far this afternoon for 132 yards. Yeah, his, his pass efficiency is well over 200. The, the college record is about 183 pass efficiency set by Sean King of Tulane. He's in position to shatter that pass efficiency record for a single season. So they try to spread the defense. McClendon to the single. Quarterback sneak first and 10. That was a good count, and we don't even know if it was a silent count or not. It could have been the way the quarterback, Rivers, got a jump. Exactly. What they do there, what you're describing, Joel, there is he comes up to the line of scrimmage and just and just gooses the center with, with his hands. And and at that point, there's not any dialogue or any conversation that goes on. He gooses the center, away he goes. The only guys that know what's going on are the quarterback and the center, and that's a walk-on center performing well. Brandon Sanders coming off the line of scrimmage well in that quarterback sneak. Six foot five, all you have to do is fall down. But by the way, you don't have to physically demonstrate that snap either. How about that? The quarterback draw. Rivers waited for the block, didn't get an extra though. And now, does he hold on to the football? Yes, as they stack it and try to tear it apart at the 10. It'll be second down after a gain of a little, a little more than a yard. Well, they went after Rivers, and he's a little unhappy. Rivers, uh, the, the competitive fire burns deeply in the heart of that young man right there. He's got a capital C on his chest for competition. And he's not going to back down from anybody or anything at any time. Due to the wide side, Comfrey in the slot with Hicks out wide. It'll be McClendon. Will they slow down? Finally they do, and they stretch the field. First time they've been able to put him down. Mike Smith, the outside linebacker. Oh, McClendon has been a factor all day long, and watch how he finishes runs. I mean, you're not going to arm tackle this guy. He'll run right through the arm tackles there. He scored a touchdown, and it, he just will not quit on any particular carry. He says, I've got a limited number of carries I'm going to get, and I'm going to make the most out of every single one of them. Remember, he's coming off a separated shoulder, and it, he, might have, he may have gotten nicked up a little bit when he was thrown to the turf. Bending over, I don't know if he just had the wind knocked out of him or if that separated shoulder was nicked up a little bit. Or 
Leahy finally getting to him as well. He's worked so much now. Third down. Little screen underneath. Great call. Great call is right to the five. And almost a touchdown. Taking it in. Devontae Edwards. It'll be down at the three. They say his knee touchdown. Instead of first and goal. It'll be fourth down coming up. Well, what, what you think here is is the defense is going to blitz. Look, they're all close to the line of scrimmage, so they run the little bubble screen, and everybody blitzes, and there's nobody left. Look at all the blockers and, and very few black jerseys down the football field. Tremendous call, and boy, he's trying to he's smelling pay dirt. Can I get there? Tries to balance himself up. Just he double dribbles, bounces into the end zone, but down at the one. Well, one line's been had it at the three. The other finally, as you saw the replay, he got it to the one yard line. It's first and goal. Boyer, McClendon. It'll be a little misdirection action. McClendon. Did he get there? He's in two shot. So he didn't get it that time, but it's only a matter of time. Six minutes into the second quarter. And they may think about that quarterback sneak again, up and over with Rivers at six foot five. I mean, he's got such a long body. You can get any surge up front. He can go up and over and just extend that ball over the goal line. Remember, the ball just has to cross the goal line, the tip of the ball, and the front of the white line of the goal line. That's all you have to have is break the plane. Second and goal. The tip of the ball right here at the front of the white line. That's all you have to get. Quarterback sneak touchdown. North Carolina State and Phillip Rivers. I'll tell you what, the thing that Chuck Amato was talking about is more than anything else, we have to be more physical than Texas Tech. They're from the Big 12. They're a physical football team. We have to compete with that level of intensity and, and physical nature, and they are. Little did we know they'd be able to play keep away, though, with a 98-yard drive followed up by a 67-yard drive. Look at the swinging gate once again out here. North Carolina State, and then they come back to a conventional formation. They can run a, run a play off that swinging gate and get a two-point conversion if Texas Tech doesn't cover it effectively. Herbert out of the hold of Young for a 10-point lead, and that's the story right now for the Wolfpack. So North Carolina State with 17 unanswered points, leading by 10 with 8.22 left in the half. Back on campus here. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Cero. One company, countless solutions. By Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. And by Toyota. Get the feeling, Toyota. Welcome back to the campus of Texas Tech University. I like to jump in that water right now. Boy, the temperature's starting to rise. And Texas Tech's offense has to help, Joel. The defense is getting tired. They've been on that field a lot. Ivory McCann will bring it back from the five. They set up a return left. How will it work? He's following the wedge. Runs up the back of his own man, though. And a good cover downfield by North Carolina State. Blowing it up. J.J. Washington, the reserve defensive back, along with Corey Dawson, the middle linebacker. So Texas Tech, a long field now at their own 26. 32 offensive snaps in North Carolina State. Only 21 so far in this game of keep away. Yeah, tech, uh, North Carolina State doing a good job of keeping the explosive. Look at, look at the time of possession differential. That's keep away at, at its classic right, best right there. And, and, you know, Texas Tech is explosive, but North Carolina State is the best way to keep that explosive offense quiet is to keep them off the field. Out of the gun. Good timing. A little slant. Nehemiah Glover with his first grab of the day, the sophomore from Lamarck, Texas. And a little guy at that at 5'8", 170. But if there's one team in college football that 10 points doesn't mean much to in terms of in, in, in effort to come from behind is a team that throws it as well as Texas Tech. I and mean, they've got big play written all over them at more than one position, so we'll see if they can respond here. This drive is important, though. McGuire, the H-back, the only one to the backfield. Kingsbury will give it to the motion man, Walker. That's a way to find the football and get into his hands. He's got a first down. Almost to the 50-yard line. Noxie, what's the latest? All right, real quick, Joel. You see T.A. McClendon on the bench right now. A little slumped over. He's playing in a great deal of pain today due to that left shoulder. A lot of players continue to walk up to him and ask him, are you okay? He keeps shaking his head. He's just going to have to play in pain today. So far, he's doing a good job, but he is playing worn out right now. 
Yeah, so. Jim mentions it. That heat has got to be a factor for both teams, and especially to the defense of Texas Tech. That's why the Raiders need a long offensive drive right now. Henderson setting up behind Kingsbury on first and ten. Henderson with a huge hole. He's got a first down to the 40-yard line. Played with a uh, separated shoulder before Joel, and it's not pleasant. And, uh, you know, I can't imagine a running back like McClendon taking the punishment and falling on the ground like, like he has time after time. You know, it reminds me of uh, the great game that Emmett Smith had, you know, with the Cowboys against the Giants with the separated shoulder. McClendon's showing that type of grit and intestinal fortitude. And I tell you, you know, you just, when you measure the heart of a guy, conditions like this show McClendon's got a big one. Well, you talk to coaches, and they, they'll bring up uh, the clock, 4-4-4-3, four, 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 but they'll always say at the back end, you can't measure the guy's motor. Exactly, exactly, and in the intangibles, and that big intangible is how big is the player's heart. McClendon's got a huge one. You know, Texas Tech's defense, Joel, they do need a rest, but they had plenty of opportunity to get off the field. They just couldn't make a play on third down to, to curtail the... The efforts of North Carolina State, they're going to have to start making plays themselves. They're responsible for as much time in the field as they've had as anybody. Kingsbury bunches him on the short side of the field, out of the gun. Blitz coming. Kingsbury trying to set up a screen. Oh. And off the fingertips of Henderson. Otherwise, it's a big, big play. Yes, it is. He's got uh, a lot of green out there. And they called the blitz from the near side, which was the short side. He went wide side. That was a call that could have worked big time. Sure, sure could have, and, and Mike Leach calls this spread offense basically an inverted wishbone. You know, and he wants production out of all four of his receivers in, in his four-receiver formation, and it's up to Kingsbury to distribute the ball to all quarters of the football field effectively, and he's done a masterful job at it. I mean, he is rewriting the Big 12 record book as well as Texas Tech's. Yeah, I did like the way he alluded to the wishbone. He says ours is just downfield, though, yeah. getting everybody touches. Instead of behind the line of scrimmage, it's in front of it. Second and ten, pocket holding up nicely for Kingsbury, uh, and then it's spiked by his receiver. He wanted Nehemiah Glover. He was looking up before he had the football. Yeah, they got two consecutive drops there. I mean, both footballs were catchable, and it, it gets contagious. Somebody's going to have to make a play for Kingsbury because that can get frustrating for a quarterback when you put the ball where you're supposed to and you don't get rewarded. Well, balance to Mike Leach, like Dave just alluded to, it's 1,000 yards from each wide receiver, and then 1,400 from Henderson, whoever it might be in the backfield. That's balance for Mike Leach, and he goes with two to each side. Third and ten for Kingsbury. Buying some time in trouble. And he takes a shot. It'll be a punting situation. Burnett caught up with him, so they put, as Jim Knox mentioned, he injured the thumb. Put the soft cast on there, and it has not slowed down the wheels, has it? Well, I'm sure they took x-rays and seeing if he's got any broken bone in there, but you get what's called gatekeeper's thumb, is when your thumb gets bent backwards and you stretch ligaments and... It, it's very difficult, so if you've got a one-handed linebacker out there, it's hard to wrap your arms up and, and tackle when you have a soft cast going in. And look at the, uh, number 45 there on the white on that on that left hand. Look at that club he's got. I mean, that's hard to wrap people up, but he does still have use of his four fingers. Great house. Got the last one down inside the 10. Cotry calls for the fair catch, and he's got it at the 18. So two out of the last three drives for Texas Tech. Stalling around the 40 of North Carolina State. The other one in that three, so it was a fumble at the 33 by Anderson. So North Carolina State dictated the tempo on the road. Warm afternoon and getting hotter now for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Wasted opportunities as they get together offensively on the sideline. Now a long field, but that has not bothered North Carolina State at all. They've already got a 98-yard drive today. Yeah, on 11 plays. From the 19, Rivers sells the play fake nicely. And on the break, his wide receiver fell down. It falls incomplete. So he wanted to go to Devontae Edwards. You know, that's a great play by him, though. He saw it happen, and he threw it where nobody could catch the football. And instead of causing himself a, a tackle for loss, sack, or whatever, he says, I'm going to line up on second and ten. And we're still, we're not on schedule. We're not off as far as we could be. Got a kick out of Amato when he said, when Rivers came on the scene, he started as a high school, right out of high school, he said he was like he's wearing pampers. Right. Then a great sophomore season, and then now he's changing. That's right. His, his own child, he's with pampers. Josh Brown, the single on second and ten. It'll be Brown, not McClendon. And they shut him down across the 20. Can't have about two for Brown, brings up third and eight for the Wolfpack. 
And that's uh, we were talking about David Carr, the number one pick with the uh, the, the uh, Houston franchise, the new franchise. Married, child, very mature guy. Rivers mature beyond his years as well. In his first two seasons, he threw for better than 5,600 yards, hitting 59% with 41 touchdowns and only 17 interceptions. He's nine over two so far this year. Golden gets his first look in the backfield. The two-way player that Jim Knox was talking to before the game. Rivers has some time. And rivals it incomplete. His receiver trying to stop Ryan Patterson, but he was sliding at the same time. It would have been a difficult grab. A former high school quarterback, a senior from Clinton, North Carolina. Let's take a look at uh, the, the leading tackler in the Big 12 for two two seasons in a row. Watch Lugens. Watch him. Uh, he's, he's trying to get the crossing patterns underneath. Oh, yeah. Get the right hand. Grab the hip. You know, that's, uh, it's no foul if they don't see it. We just wanted to make sure that he was in, uh, in close proximity. Austin Herbert sends out a beauty for a guy that's only got a 34-yard average. Welker backpedaling inside his own 30. Gets a block to the boundary. And across the 40, takes a shot going down. He's in a heap at the 42. So that is the first time in four possessions this year, our four possessions today, that North Carolina State has been held without a first down, free and out with a punt. Dr. Pepper tribute time. Only two Red Raider quarterbacks have thrown for more than 400 yards in a game with Kingsbury. He's only done it four times. Right. How about that other quarterback? And Good look, golfer, that other you know, quarterback. I was going to say, he is a serious golfer. He can really hit it. He's, he's probably he's probably about a, uh, a scratcher, or one or two handicap max. Right there. He can play. Kingsbury back out there. Good field position finally for the Red Raiders. Well, they start at the 42. Last time they had it stalled right around the 40 of North Carolina State after starting their own 26. Henderson, nifty moves into the secondary, down the sideline. Safety has to get him in the way. Holt saved a touchdown. He sure did, and, and Holt's the quarterback of the defense, and, and Coach Leach from Texas Tech paid him the ultimate compliment, saying he's never out of position. He knows exactly where he's supposed to be, and this was designed to go off tackle left and an immediate cutback. Boy, and it just got a great cutback lane. Somebody got a nice cut block at the line of scrimmage, and uh, just hogtied was Henderson. Holt just like a little rodeo took him down. First and 10 all the way down to the Wolfpack 36. Kingsbury oh, looking no. on a double move. Page pumped with the ball to the air. No flag. Right around the 20-yard line. Gregory Golden down there. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah. Continues from West Texas. The home of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. A team trying to go 3-1 and one of the season. North Carolina State. Been a long time since they've been 5 0. They've only done it seven times in the 111 year history of college football at North Carolina State, so it could be special for them. And only the third year for Chuck Amato. Kingsbury in trouble. There's the good footwork we were talking about. And the grab made. Welker, it seems like when he's in trouble, he looks for 27. Absolutely. He's the go to guy. Welker, they've, they've let Welker run the ball a little bit on a reverse to get him involved. and. As we said before, over 160 yards per game, all purpose on punt returns and running the football and catching the football. And well, because he's got his hand up, hey, I'm available. I'm available for you, Cliff. Get me the football. And Kingsbury, as he was working his way toward the line of scrimmage, still a yard or two behind it, got the ball to Welker effectively. They get the first down. It's at the 26. Kingsbury trying to set a screen. It's a dump off. And the grab made by a pitch. It works both ways for this team. And Meeks instead. Meeks on the catch. He'll take it down to the 21 for a gain of about five. Nice, so, nice tackle by Ati Lindsay there. Good recovery, wasn't it? Yeah. Another young football player. This defense, Coach Amato said he's got seven players on his defensive football team that have only been on campus 13 months. Soft, two sophomores and, and uh, redshirt freshmen and transfers. Double move into the corner of the end zone. Jump ball knocked away as he tried to get it. The Nehemiah Glover. And 
The defensive back never located the ball, but timed it well. That was Reed. Yes. And, and Glover's, uh, he's got a hitch in the get-along as he gets up. Reed's another guy that's been effective on special teams and just got his hand in there trying to disrupt things. And, and he, he fell on that uh, right wrist and one point landing on his wrist and then fell on his right hip. But as he braces his fall, look at the right hand. Boy, he falls on top of it. Oh, he bent that hand and wrist pretty effectively underneath his body. A little more than four minutes left in the half. And they put a dent in the 10-point lead. Talk it over before they try. The Red Raiders use their first time out of the first half on a third and five coming up. And will it be their second? It's only one left for North Carolina State. Talked about your college football use instant replay. I agree. Not, not as many as you would think, though, going yeah. on the affirmative. Yeah, it's almost a two to one margin but uh, you know I think if you have the technology to to correct mistakes flagrant mistakes you should have an opportunity to do it you hate to see football teams lose because of human error is part of the game but you know if it's totally blown and it can be corrected easily I don't see a problem in doing that you know we just saw that big play by Lamont Reed the one thing that Mike Leach did emphasize to us the corners and most of the defensive backs from North Carolina State he said are bigger than we normally see. Yep. And that's Hudson at 6-1, who's been the spy on Welker. Reed, 6-even. Maddox, 6-even. Terrence Holt, 6-2. And Reed, his special team's contribution so far this season, 90-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And uh, he picked up a 30-yard, uh, he, he picked up a fumble, covering a kickoff, took it 30 yards for a touchdown, and he blocked an extra point. So, as we said before, Amato, and, and uh, Coach Leach, they use their starters on special teams. They sprinkle them in there liberally. They, they, it's important to both of them. Henderson in the backfield joining Kingsbury in the gun. So here we go. Three wide receivers in the formation. It's only a three-man run. Oh, that is intercepted. What a dive. And almost picked by Marcus Hudson. Timed it perfectly. And there's the there's the shadow that we talked about. And, and, and watch his effort here. It's coming right into your couch as you're watching. Oh boy, that's right at you. And, and, and that's the shadow, and that's Welker. Welker's saying, I cannot shake Hudson. Hudson is, he's a, you know, he's just he's following me around. It's a hot day. I got two shadows. I got my own. I got another guy that's right inside of my shadow. 38-yard field goal attempt for Robert Treese, his first try of the day, three for five so far this year. He has had one block. Can he make it a seven-point ball game? Plenty of distance. Oh, yeah. And on target. That's good from beyond 50. So the Red Raiders finally get some points in Wolfpack territory. Red Raiders ready to kick it away. And on a line, it's going to be Golden across the 25. Nice open moves, open field moves past the 35. So Greg Golden puts him in good field position. Josh Rankle making the stop at North Carolina State outside of their own 35-yard line, getting it for the fifth time this afternoon. This uh, seven-play, 37-yard drive for Texas Tech. Taking a little over a minute off the clock, but Joel, as you described, a low-line drive kickoff. Very, very tough to cover. It comes right back at you quickly. You have to get better hang time than that. A lot of pressure on your kickoff cover team. Well, they go back to work with McClendon. They will, and McClendon's got some room to move. McClendon takes the tap pile, doesn't he? All the way close to the 45-yard line. Give him a little more than eight on first down. Well, this week, a doubleheader on Fox NFL Sunday with the Saints take on the Bears. Both teams trying to go to 3-0. The Red, well, you remember in the preseason, the Redskins, they ran it up on the 49ers. 49ers, I got a feeling they're going to have some fun tomorrow. It all begins with Fox NFL Sunday, the pregame show this week. Only on Fox. Second and short, McClendon again. And he won't get back. Yes, he will. Oh, boy, he never loses a yard, does he? The two ends converged. Adele Duckett and Aaron Hunt, but he still 
got plus yardage out of it when he looked like he was going to lose a yard or two. He's got a great instinct of splitting defenders. I mean, he makes a violent cut with his right or left foot. Whichever one gets him up the field quickest, squares those shoulder pads up and always splits defenders. He's, he's incredible. Let's take a look at uh, the cut. Plants that left foot. Up the football field he goes. Low pad level and splits defenders. I think a violent cut's a good assessment. He can really turn it. Now, can he get a yard? Breaking tackles. Unbelievable. He made two miss in the backfield. He doesn't get it, but he got away from Flugents, who had the early penetration, duck it as well. That is finally stopped short of the first down by Smith, the outside backer, but it took two or three to slow him down. That's the best run I've ever seen for a half-yard loss. I mean, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anything better than that. The first guy never brings him down, and Rivers is... Uh, He's upset on the sideline, not taking advantage of a third and one conversion. So, boy, going to be better than that, in his opinion. Welker going back again, waiting for the punt from Herbert. From the 15, Welker. Oh, Brad. Crossing the 23. And what a shot he took from Cotri, the wide receiver. Another starter on special teams. That's the starting wide receiver on punt coverage. Watch the peel back block coming right. Uh, let, we missed it. Which the peel back? The peel back block was extraordinary. And, and watch, you know, when you're a punter, you're going to get your head on a swivel. That was close to being an illegal block in the back. But you can't just jog downfield thinking, you know, everything's a great, uh, a great summer day here. Nobody around. You can get your ear hole taken off. Seven point deficit. Henderson stopped after a short game. A little more than a yard. U.S. Postal Service game stats in the seven-point contest at North Carolina State. Well, getting it together on the ground. The 75 yards so far, the surprising part. You didn't think Tech had as many, did you? No, sure did. 17. Good floater. And close to a first down, pull down from behind is the wide receiver. The ones that you forget about is Welker on those reverses. Those are big chunks, and they go in the in the rushing column. And Henderson actually, but you know that's a nice touch pass, isn't it? Catching your man in stride. That's the key. Is make, let him allow them the opportunity to do something after catch. Now for the first down, it will be a first down. That'll stop the clock at the quarterback sneak by Kingsbury. He lost it, but they're saying he's down already. Still one time out of the board for Texas Tech. Remember, the clock stops in college football after a first down, so you have four downs to work with. You can spike the ball. There's many ways you can still move this football. A bunch three on the wide side of the field. Kingsbury has Solo on the near side, though, and a low throw. Too tough to come up with for Nehemiah Glover. Glover, uh, he was there. Kingsbury trying to thread it between two defenders, safety and corner in the zone. And watch Glover work his way into the zone here, trying to right between these two, and Kingsbury's trying to, to, to filter it in there. And, and Texas Tech's got a very easy formula. When it's man, you continue to run. When it's zone, you settle into that scene and make yourself available to the quarterback. On second and ten, only a three-man rush. Man out of bounds anyway, as he wanted Page. Yeah, he was just chucked out of bounds by Golden. It's a good idea. Put him out. He's gone for the play. Yep. He can't be the first one to come back in the field to play and touch the football. And Golden, I mean, he's returned kicks, run the ball, he's played corner. He's getting a few snaps today, number 22 in the white. Here he is down here, whoops, at the bottom of the field. Got a good shot of him right there. Well, earlier this year, most of his play came offensively at tailback. But because they need extra D-backs today with all the wide receivers in tech. It's the other way around. Now, can Kingsbury get the marker for the first down? I don't believe it in a quarterback draw. We've talked about how heavy he is because, let's face it, he's not a burner to begin with. And, you know, his, his rushing yards crept up in that 117-yard total a few plays back as well. And this is a design play, quarterback draw, as you described, Joe. And, you know, he, he, he looks like he knows what he's doing out there. It's not like it's foreign to him. Saving their time out. The clock starts to move. He's got a man down field if he wants it. And he and Trevor Kingsbury better get rid of it. He's put down. 
He's got to throw it away. And how about a completion for a first down to Page? He's got it inside the 38. Resourceful again. So he got away from Lamont Reed. I'll tell you, I got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line on that play, Joel, because nobody leaked down the field. Very easily in a situation like this when your quarterback is running around crazily and you don't know if he's going to, you know, try to get it up the field and get over the line of scrimmage or not, you have a tendency to get downfield to make a block to help him. Nobody get downfield illegally. They did a nice job of staying where they needed to stay. So now a timeout has been taken. Final timeout used by the Red Raiders in the seven-point ball game. But you talked about the big guys. Mike Leach, he used to coach the offensive line. He likes them a little bit. Well, watch him here. Watch when the quarterback, you know, then now they're saying, my, where's my quarterback? And, and you know, now, now, he's, now he's in a little bit of trouble. So now is he going to get sacked? Do I go down the football field and throw a block? Oh, now he's free. Oh, get back. Don't go down the football field. Nobody crosses the line of scrimmage and allows him to throw the ball down the field in a legal manner and, and, and uh, complete the play. Coming up, the Nissan Halftime Report. We'll head to the studio. An update from Chris, Kellen, and Artie. What about the band from Raiderland? We'll have scores and highlights from around the nation. Jim Knox will help us down to the sideline. That's all at the half. So Tech has one left. There's only 15 ticks left on the clock. And the Raiders finally got their defense to get the offense back on the field. They made some plays. In fact, the last two possessions for North Carolina State, three and out with a punt. First time in the game, they've not picked up a first down on a possession. But will they surrender seven or three here in the final 15 seconds? Going to take a shot at the end zone. No timeouts, and that'll ripped away. It'll have to be covered, and that'll do it. Sean Price covers it. And Sean Price, rather the left end, forced the fumble. And that'll do it for the half. He's special. Sean Price runs a 4-4-40, benches 440 pounds, and has a vertical jump of 37 inches. That is an athlete and a half right there. Yeah, we had Tech down to zero, but obviously Tech does have one more timeout, and as you mentioned, now it will be the tip drill. He'll throw it towards the end zone. Price, uh, here, here's a guy, four sacks on the season. That's number five. That's his second force fumble as well. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah returns to Fox Sports Net. It's next week when Derek Anderson, the Oregon State Beavers, open for the Pac-10 season, matching up with Carson Palmer, the 11th ranked USC Trojans. Coverage all starts next Saturday with the College Football Saturday kickoff show at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. So from the 47, huge loss. A loss of almost 20 yards. It'll be the final snap barring a penalty. It'll be second and 22 as they gave away 12 of the fourth fumble. And now the tip trip. A lot of white jerseys. And on the deflection, it's knocked away. As that was a very entertaining start to the contest. So it had North Carolina State up early, then Texas, well, Texas Tech up early, then North Carolina State took over, and North Carolina State's head coach right now downstairs with Jim Knox. Jim? All right, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Coach, you got to be extremely pleased. Offense really moving the ball on this Red Raider defense. Rivers over 150 yards past McClendon, well on pace for a 100-yard game. No question about it, but you know what? We've got to stop the running game of their, of their football team or this thing will have a, we'll have a lot of fun down the wire. I appreciate the time, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Coming up next, the Nissan Halftime Report with Chris Rose, Kellen Winslow, and Artie Chigatino right after this quick timeout. Welcome back to the Nissan Halftime Report back inside Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. We have hit halftime, and we have a good one going on. 17th break, North Carolina State leading Texas Tech at the break by the score of 17-10. to 10. And hello again, everyone. I am Jim Knox. We do welcome you back to the Nissan Halftime Report. This game was being billed as a tough game between two good teams with outstanding quarterbacks. Texas Tech Heisman hopeful Cliff Kingsbury going against NC State Wolfpack. Philip Rivers. They matched each other blow for blow in the first half, but the early nod and stats goes to 
Phillip Rivers of NC State. 12 of 16 for 144 yards. Phillips Rivers definitely having a nice first half. Now, earlier we caught up with his head coach, Chuck Amano. He talked about the leadership Rivers provides for this club. His head, he's so head, he's his toughness. He makes great decisions. He's got a quick release. Uh, contrary to everybody says, he's got an ugly release, which he might, but it's, it gets there, and it gets there right where it's supposed to be. Phillips Rivers definitely getting it done. First play of the game for the Wolfpack. Look at this outstanding catch. He's doing it deep. He's doing it short to get him out of the end zone right here. Phillip Rivers hitting the back out of the backfield. Golden, what an outstanding job Phillip Rivers is doing in the first half. 12 of 16 for 144 yards. Cliff Kingsbury also a nice job as well. Texas Tech band performing behind me. They had an outstanding half. Let's listen in as well as check in college football scores from around the country right now. Welcome back to the Nissan Halftime Report. Halftime coming to a close in Lubbock, Texas, and we have a dandy going on. Texas Tech trail in North Carolina State at the break, 17-10. And this game, as we mentioned, being built between two heavyweight quarterbacks, Cliff Kingsbury against Phillip Rivers of North Carolina State, matching each other in the first half just about blow for blow. Who will be the last one standing today? That remains to be seen. With more on the first half, let's head upstairs and join Joel Myers and Dave Lapham. Joel? Thanks, Noxie. That's a good call. It really is a matchup of two heavyweights at the quarterback position. Interesting start because it looked like Tech was ready to roll, but then all of a sudden North Carolina State plays a game of keep away. They really did. They went on a 98-yard drive, 11 plays, just ate the clock up. Time of possession favors them. The difference in the game, Joel, the seven points, though, is turnover. Holt forced a fumble that North Carolina State took advantage of. Only turnover of the game, and uh, as a result, North Carolina State scored a touchdown off of that short field to take the seven-point advantage. But we got ourselves a good football game. Unusual. Tech has more first downs, but North Carolina State, five, five minutes and 50 seconds more time of possession because of the snaps they were. And as we anticipated, both quarterbacks very impressive. We'll be right back with the second half kickoff in West Texas. Shootout in the West, and believe it or not, 27 on the board. Could have been a lot more for these two teams with the two quarterbacks, Cliff Kingsbury, warming up for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. But it's going to be Phillip Rivers at North Carolina State with the football first to start the second half. And welcome back to Lubbock. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, Jim Knox. And what a start for Phillip Rivers. You know, we brought up the situation where everybody questioned his form. And let's face it, Dave, some question the level of competition for North Carolina State in the number 16 ranking. Boy, after the first half, I don't think you question it anymore. Well, you can't question his heart as a competitor. I mean, he showed that in the first half big time. This guy will do anything to win the football game. You know, we threw out our Dr. Pepper trivia earlier in the first half. The other Texas Tech quarterback to throw for better than 400 yards. Scratch golfer for Billy Joe Tolliver. How about Billy Joe? And he did it twice. Back when they weren't running the spread offense, he threw for over 400. That's pretty strong. So Billy Joe Tolliver. Think about Bam Morris when you think of Red Raider football recently. How about go back to the 60s? Donnie Anderson. Donnie Anderson. The Packers great out of this program. Byron Hansbard, good running back uh, out of Texas Tech. And there was a guy that played defensive line, was a number one pick with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Gabe Rivera, senior sack. Had a tragic car accident that paralyzed him. He would have been an unbelievable football player in the NFL for years and years if not for that car accident. Too bad. Yeah, there wasn't a ton of help for yeah. Cliff Kingsbury, whether it was drops or getting to him in the pocket. Well, he showed his toughness early on, and uh, this is the kind of hits that he's taken in his career and get back up for more. But now they're catchable footballs. Are they? That's definitely a, on the receiver right there. This one a little bit low in the seam of the zone, but a catchable football. So I think what's happened is Rivers' uh, teammates have stepped up and hit and supported him a little bit more than Kingsbury's have. So particularly McClendon for Rivers. He's been a big factor. Somebody's going to have to step up to support Kingsbury like others have for Rivers. Well, the slight delay we had, now we're ready for the start of the second half. They had problems with the clock. They have rectified the situation at the opposite end. So that board is going to be down. You can't deny us, though. We are ready to go. Absolutely. Golden Reed waiting for the kickoff. Robert Trace and a line drive, don't forget. Will it be Reed? 
bringing it up, goal. Couple of yards in. Indecision. Doesn't make any difference. There he goes. Great return across the 40 yard line. Damn. So the two way player, Greg Golden, who started a tailback for him this year and he's been to the secondary today, brought down by Ricky Saylor. Almost went 102 yards. Well, he's uh, played a little running back, some cornerback, and a definite factor in the return game as a kick returner. He's been, he's been a three way guy, he's, he's done it all. Now, the one thing Chuck Amato emphasized us last night more than anything else was special teams. The kicking game and returns. Dictating field position, they have. Rivers out of the gun. Tons of time, and underneath, grab is made by Sterling Hicks. Good yardage by the sophomore. Two in the area, one underneath, one about seven, eight yards downfield. They flooded that side effectively. Exactly. They do a good job of flooding a zone and, and outnumbering Texas Tech and others and, and let the, uh, the, the very, very intelligent quarterback make the right decision. And he does instantaneously almost. He gets the ball out of there very, very quickly. Now, Dave, let's face it. There's been very little pressure on Phillip Rivers today. Exactly. North Carolina State's offensive line has held up well. From the 47 of Tex, a little misdirection. Skipping through as McClendon into the secondary and barely tripped up. Pierce gets him the free safety, but did he go through Flugin again? Yeah, you know, Flugin's is a guy that uh, is a very, very sure tackler. It just shows the excellence of McClendon because Flugin's is just arm tackling him and McClendon's just busting right free of it. Little misdirection counter. The guard pulls, backside tackle pulls. Here comes Flugins, and actually he's he's taken to the ground. He, he does try to trip McClendon up, but McClendon got that high knee action. He steps right over that arm tackle of Flugins. Pretty good effort by McClendon. Nice job by the offensive line to chop Flugins to the turf. Opening things up, they empty the backfield. The Rivers finally city and finds his man over the middle hicks. He's got another first down to the 19-yard line. Not a bad ad-lib. So Sterling Hicks helping out his quarterback, finding a little space in the middle of the field. And uh, really, you have to play pass defense as well as run defense against North Carolina State. And he's trying to read Rivers' eyes, does Flugents, and he's just drifting a little bit. Throws the ball right into a, a seam between he and the safety. I'll tell you, Rivers is, uh, is very, very patient. Lawrence Flugins is a great football player, though. He's averaging over 20 tackles a game for this football team, and he's led the Big 12 the last two years and was fourth in the country two years ago. Been very, very productive for Texas Tech. Senior from Klein, Texas. He's got an injury. He got an injured Tech player at the 20-yard line. So Flugins, second team, all Big 12 last year. They look at a injured Red Raider. And we've got a time into the field. Come right back. Wolfpack driving once again. Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net brought to you by Levi's Boot Fit Jeans, not just the Cowboys, by Acura. The experience and performance today, your local Acura dealer, and by Red Center, where you can get the best in electronics, furniture, and appliances. On first down, they found McClendon down to the 17 yard line, and why not? The kid was so efficient the first half. All 5'11, 215 pounds. Playing with a, a damaged left shoulder. Had a shoulder separation. Playing through pain. This drive started after a great return by Golden at the 42-yard line of the Wolfpack. Now they've got it second at about eight. The 17-yard line of Texas Tech. The Rivers with three on the wide side. Flooding the right side, going to the short side. Hicks makes a miss. Good move downfield by, in fact, Peterson for a big gain of first and goal. Jim Knox, what's the latest? All right, Joe, good to see Ricky Saylor back in the game. The defensive back went off the field. Just one play, breath knocked out of him. He's back in now. Talk to Mike Leach coming off from halftime, and he told me they got to wrap up on T.A. McClendon. So far, that's not happening here in the second half. He is gaining some big yards. Well, he is, Jim. Yards after contact for him and yards after catch for the receivers. Two things that uh, Chuck Amato wanted are happening for his offense. It is McClendon once again to the backfield. They slide the fullback. And they finally get him in the backfield, but still a yard for McClendon with Adel Duckett down around the ankle. 
You know, one thing that uh, North Carolina State did is they they moved a couple of uh, defensive linemen uh, to the offensive line. Both guards are, are former defensive linemen for the uh, for the North Carolina State Wolfpack, and they and they weren't just guys. You know, they played significant snaps at defensive tackle and defensive end, and they bring a nasty mentality, you know, up front of that offensive line. And they like to pancake people in that running game, and McClendon's benefiting. Rivers calling on assignments. What a configuration. Quarterback draws there if he wants it. He saw it down to the three-yard line. It'll be third and goal from the three. It wasn't by design, Joel. You're right. It, I don't think it was It was a play call, but the Red Sea parted for him. And the offensive line does a good job. He, he goes through his progression. Now he says, hey, you know, I can I can get something done down the football field. And He's a big guy now. I mean, he can take a hit. 6'5", 235 pounds. And they stood him up at the three. He fell forward. You're right. He got it all the way down to the one where it's third and goal. So that brings McClendon back into play, doesn't it? Sure does. And, and it, Rivers as well. He snuck in from less than a yard out, but... He came here for two things, Joel, to beat the Ra Red Raiders football team and to meet Bobby Knight, one of his boyhood heroes, and and he loves Bobby Knight. I don't know if uh, Rivers was able to get that accomplished or not, but... Well, Bobby's at the game. You would you would think the it's not surprising to me that the son of a high school football coach has a lot of respect for Bobby Knight, you know, in that discipline. So a third and goal coming up. Red Raiders are make it the Wolfpack use their first time out of the second half. You get the start of the NFL weekend earlier. You can start tonight, in fact. The incredible new pregame show on Fox Sports Net. They'll examine what's wrong with the Rams. Tommy Davidson, well, why didn't we get this assignment lap? He heads to the Playboy Mansion. Start your NFL weekend tonight. The NFL show presented by the U.S. Postal Service tonight after college football, 1030 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning, 7.30 Pacific. But you can see it late tonight as well. Let me ask you, Joel. You know, he wanted to meet Bobby Knight. If there's anybody in the world, you can go back to the beginning of time, male or female, who would you want to meet? <laughs> Think about that a little bit. Second. <laughs> Midas. Oh. Leaderboard as far as offensive scores are concerned. And Philip Rivers accounting for 14. That's amazing. That's productivity right there. But Derek Anderson and Oregon State are going to be on Fox Sports Net next week. And look who else was in that in that top uh, echelon. Kingsbury with nine. Now the toss sweep. McClendon. They stretch it. He can walk in. Timeout paid off, didn't it? Touchdown. North Carolina State. Great job of blocking by North Carolina State. They got Texas Tech Red Raiders on the ground. I mean, you know, you can't pursue if you're on the ground. And there was some chopping going on. They were falling like big sequoia trees. And McClendon, he would have scored in touch football. Nobody laid a fingernail on him. <laughs> Look at the Here comes the swinging gate again. It's swinging. But it's swinging shut. They're going to kick the extra point. Austin Herbert in. Junior from Cary, North Carolina. And it's a 14-point lead. The largest of the day for either team. State had an early 10-point lead at 17 to 7, and North Carolina State trying to raise the record to 5 and 0. Gets another score from McClendon, 24 to 10. Dominating start to the second half for North Carolina State. The Wolfpack with a 24 to 10 lead. See Coach uh, McMakin there talking to his defense, and on the flip side of it, Coach Galber talking to his offense, and he's excited, and Coach McMakin's upset. They can. Waiting for the kickoff. He won't see it, though. It'll be taken by one of the up men, and that's Bachman looking for a block. Good return by Bachman out to the 35-yard line. So Texas Tech finally gets their hands on the ball. For the first time in the second half, four minutes gone by in the third quarter. That's one way to beat a good quarterback. Make sure he's still on the sideline. Absolutely. Keep his helmet under his arm. And another eight-play, that 11-play drive for 98. Eight-play drive. For 59, almost taking four minutes off the clock. That's big time. And, and not only are they eating the clock up, they're scoring touchdowns, not settling for field goal. They're putting it in the end zone now. Go, go, go. More conventional go. look for Kingsbury with two tight ends. Even though they don't have their truly two tight ends. And a fumble to the snap, picked up by North Carolina State. Coming away with it. Uh oh. And maybe going the distance, the linebacker, Sean Price, will he take it in? Touchdown, Will Pack. Well, he runs a 4-4-40, and once he got a clear lane, he was gone. He was up the alley, and it's falling apart for a Texas Tech. When you can't get a center quarterback exchange clean, 
and the ball is fumbled at the line of scrimmage. It's not your day in North Carolina State. Their second takeaway of the day, and they score a defensive touchdown. And look, it's just a bad snap, kicking the ball around, picks the ball up. Now he says, I'm going to score. I, I, I'm turning running back. I, I see golden goal posts. I'm going to be a hero here. Loper had the best chance at him. And, and Price just uh, shows that speed. I mean, he runs well. Two takeaways, two touchdowns. You know, that's a, a third of the scores for North Carolina State in the season have been set up by the defense or big plays in the special teams. And they score a defensive touchdown right there that's just a killer for uh, Texas Tech and a big, big play for North Carolina State. Well, they told us Sean Price is the strongest player on the team, and he looked like it. The way he peeled away from that big lineman. He's a freak of nature. He benches 440 pounds, yet runs a 4-4-40. So he's got the strength of a big defensive lineman and the speed of a running back. That's a size-speed ratio nightmare. So a return of a little more than 30 yards after the fumbled snap. Boy, he knew what to do with it, too. Herbert for the point after. And now, all of a sudden, it expands to a 21-point lead. Well, look back at the previous score yeah. where there were some nice adjustments before the snap by North Carolina State. Look at the bunch, and then they shift. And then look what happens here, Joel, as the, as the defense tries to shift with them. They come a man short. Down blocking, a bunch of guys hit the ground. Watch the cut blocks on the on the crackbacks. Everybody down blocks out of that bunch. And watch, you'll see bodies start falling for Texas Tech. Boom, boom, boom. Now, how can you pursue? You can't. Easy lane, touchdown. Everybody's on the ground. Great job of blocking by the Wolfpack. And then followed up by can't get an exchange, center quarterback exchange. The ball's kicked around. The athlete, Sean Price, the freak, the mini freak, picks it up, and he breaks the tackle, runs into his own man, and says, hey, I, I can score. I'm going to score. He did. Well, his directional kicking has worked out well for North Carolina State. As Kiker will do it again. Into the same spot, wow. puts it on the ground. Did they recover again? Yes. yes. Unreal. Another turnover. Disbelief. Coming up with a football for North Carolina State, Corey Dawson, the linebacker. So North Carolina State getting it in Texas Tech territory after the quick exchange. North Carolina State now plus three today on the turnover department in, in Texas Tech minus three, and, and this one's just second hit. Boom, right there, the big defensive tackle covering kickoffs. Ronaldo Moses puts his helmet right on the football and knocks it free. Big, big play out of the kicking game once again. North Carolina State dominating all phases, offensively, defensively, and the kicking game. Well, Chuck Amato looks like a prophet the way he preached to us. Got to win the kicking game. And we talked about it at the very top of the telecast. And he said we have to be physical. And boy, are they being physical. But Blendon making a miss. And finally, they get him at the 27-yard line after a gain of one. Noxie, what's going on downstairs? All right, more bad news for that Red Raiders defense. Clayton Harmon on the bench right now. He's not even in pads, guys. Street clothes in his jersey. A bad back. He is through for the day. 6'7", 287 pounder with a bad back. You know, and I don't care how big and strong you are, if you have back problems, it's the great new neutralizer, equalizer. Empty backfield for Phillip Rivers on second and ten, the lateral pass. A quickie to Cotri. He doesn't mind contact. We've seen him on special teams, and he's got it close to the 21-yard line. It'll be third and short. Chuck Amato's got to be thrilled to death. I mean, this game is unfolding for him, particularly here in the start of the second half, exactly how the doctor ordered. And it's not like big plays. It's the little things are doing well. The pooch kick, pin the guy to the boundary, and then scrape it away. Yep, and they've done, uh, they, they've really, really hit people. And, and here here you have a, a defense coordinator, Greg McMakin, that's a, that's a great, a fine football coach, but right now he's in a whole lot of trouble trying to stem the tide here, the, the onslaught by the Wolfpack. Rivers on third and a little more than three. Throwing behind for one of the few times trying to get Sterling Hicks. Looked like he expected Hicks to settle in the zone and Hicks kept floating toward the middle. And they're talking about it right now. Rivers expected him to settle in. And Hicks kept taking it toward the middle of the football field and Rivers ended, throwing up, ended up throwing it behind him. So a rare breakdown of the passing game. 
for Phillip Rivers and the Wolfpack. It'll be a 39-yard attempt for Austin Herbert. He's already hit a 42-yarder, his only try of the day. So the nine points on the turnover. Wow. It looked like Aaron Hunt may have been the one to get to it. No surprise there. You know, the best athletes make the big plays, and Aaron Hunt's a heck of a player. I think it was recovered by Hanson. And Hunt, I think, blocked it, and Hanson came up with it. So Aaron Hunt of the block. Red Raiders get it back at the 27. And they need it. Yeah, this was uh, this was huge, and and Hunt Hunt right here, that that's just poor technique by North Carolina State. You know, Joseph Gray, the big tight end, you have to block down, step down inside. You can't let an athlete like that inside of you. Yeah, you know, just poor technique of not stepping down inside and sealing it up. Kingsbury, better exchange this time, dumping it off Page, nothing there. Three up to the 30. Good game tackling. Led by the weak side backer, Pat Thomas, the sophomore from Killian High School in Miami. You know, there's another similarity between these two teams, Joel. Uh, it, with, with Texas Tech and, and, and Coach Leach, in 10 of his 28 games that he's been head coach, he's gotten a touchdown from his defense or special teams. And for Coach Amato this season, one-third of his score has been set up by a big play by the defense or special team. So they live off all three phases, not just offense, to score. Anderson shorts out of the field, toss, and it will work. Great pursuit, Pat Thomas again. So Thomas all over it. He looked like a running back with that kind of speed. And this guy's excited, Chuck Amato. Great linebacker in his playing career, collegiately at North Carolina State. Head coach of his alma mater. He went down to Florida State last year and beat his mentor. First uh, school that ever beat Florida State in an ACC game down in Tallahassee. And he was emotional after that football game, and he's, he's getting a turnaround quickly for his alma mater at North Carolina State. And you talked about it earlier. Five true sophomores start on the defense. Now Kingsbury in trouble. Eluded it again. Flag down in the secondary, and it's thrown away. I think we're going to see a defensive holding call from the field judge. And the pressure that Kingsbury was in trouble was, was, was uh, Sean Price. I mean, the guy is just... Living in the backfield now. He's all jacked up. We're meeting in the Zebras. Look at the convention. Yipe stripes. Flag thrown way downfield. Deep in the secondary. Now, we'll to keep Kingsbury on the field. They failed to convert on third and seven. You know, the, the uh, North Carolina State Wolfpack... Doing a good job of defending this spread offense as well as anybody has in the recent past. Picking the no flag, flag up. Terrence Holt real upset. You could see the ball was not in the air when the flag was thrown. And maybe that had something to do with it as well. We're in West Texas. This matchup between the ACC and Big 12. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah on Fox Sports Net. At all ACC right now, North Carolina State beating Texas Tech to the punch, punch in almost every area. I'm impressed with North Carolina State's overall team speed. It's very, very fine. Gotry waiting for the punt from Clinton Greathouse. Should be good field position, and they're after it. Yeah. Greathouse sends out the wobbler. Gotry got the block he was looking for at the 35. Another one at the 40. Good wall down the sideline. Great field position. He'll be brought down from behind. Another short field to work with. The ball all the way to the 30 and late flags. Yep. Little frustration flag coming in, I think. And I don't know if they're going to call a celebration or a late hit on Texas Tech. We'll have to find out. But another thing that Chuck Amato talked about, Joel, was winning the hidden yards, field position. Their average drive start, the Wolfpack, is much, much better than Texas Tech over the course of this football game. They have dominated field position, hidden yards. So, personal foul. Tried to, in Greathouse here, tried to fake the fact that Holt ran into him. Tried to win an Academy Award there, and 
And there was no uh, no harm, no foul. He was back, his own man was backed into him. Right, and Holt was blocked in. Holt just bull rushed his man back in, and, and Holt was kind of pushed into the into the fray. So now a uh, little frustration foul on Texas Tech, and you have an extremely short field for da for Philip Rivers and company. I keep wanting to call the great guard from Notre Dame, David Rivers. I keep wanting to do that, but it's Philip Rivers, and he is one heck of a football player. And now Texas Tech. They say Tech is taking a time. Mike Leach. Oh, is the punt of the one called the personal foul to the end of the play? Watch, uh, watch Greathouse right here at the bottom. See what he does. See, see what happens here. And uh, he's gonna, he's gonna get back into the mix. Oh, little, little late hit for Greathouse. Little cheap, cheapy. <laughs> and he, got, he unloaded though. You know, Great House played defensive back in in in, uh, in high school, and he went after the main man, Sean Price. He said, "You know what? I don't like that touchdown you scored on us and that fumbled exchange. I'm going to make you pay." Well, he get, he had to pay. He got a nice shot, but it cost him 15 freebies. So it goes all the way down to the 15-yard line. The ultimate for North Carolina State. College football Saturday presented by Kia Zara returns to Fox Sports Net next week. Derek Anderson, Oregon State Beavers, opening up Pac-10 play, matching up with Carson Palmer, the 11th ranked USC Trojans. It all starts next Saturday. College football Saturday kickoff show comes your way at 11:30 Eastern, 8:30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Didn't think we'd have a blowout, and now it could be a legitimate blowout. And this early, Dave, seven and a half to play in the third. Well, the body language is is all in North Carolina State's favor. I mean, they're prancing around the field. Their, their feet are barely touching the field, whereas Texas Tech, their hands are on their hips, their shoulders are slumped, and their chins are on their chest. T.A. McClendon. He's already got two rushing touchdowns. Little trap play. Breaking through to the 10. First and goal at the three. He gallops his way through a hole, doesn't he? Well, he sure does. Very little wasted motion. I mean, he makes these subtle cuts and uh, generating a lot of speed up the football field and power with those subtle cuts. He is the real deal. Chuck Amato's found himself a diamond in the rough there. And everybody said, you know, hey, 170 touchdowns and rushing touchdowns in high school, 178 overall. He, he wasn't playing against any good competition. Well, he is now, and he's still productive. He can play. So they've got a true freshman to McLeod. Philip Rivers, don't forget, he's only a junior. He's not hurt. The lead blocker McClendon didn't need much though, did he? Touchdown. North Carolina State. And the second consecutive time he went into the end zone untouched. And, and it, it's, uh, it all starts up front. You know, you, you get a little bit of a surge in, in this tight field, and you have to get off the football very well as they do as a group. And look at them sustaining the blocks. I mean, they're engulfing Texas Tech. Texas Tech, nobody's separating from the block and pursuing and making a play. I mean, their finishing blocks are the wolf pack, big time. Herbert's right leg's got to be getting weary. He makes it a 38 to 10 lead for North Carolina State. 6.58 after the third quarter in Lubbock. North Carolina State by 28. As they have capitalized on a turnover now and a great return by Contrary. Coach McMakin there trying to get things figured out with his defensive troops. Bachman at the 17. Can he hang on to it? He lost it last time, don't forget. He's across the 35. Give him about the 37. And you never know where Jim Knox is going to pop up, do you, Knoxie? Yeah. Uh, no, not at all. I'm, I'm almost near you guys, high above Jones Stadium, guys. That's right. Construction underway, as you mentioned earlier. A brand new press box will be in play by next season. This is going to be nice. They'll have 47 luxury boxes, club level seating, indoor, outdoor. And get this the press box will be exactly like the Nebraska Cornhusker press box. They got the same blueprints from Nebraska. You know, in Nebraska's press box, guys, they got a restroom named after a certain play by play guy. I'm throwing in the, the hat early. I'm going to nominate Dave Lapham restroom <laughs> right here at Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> 
Page uh, inside the 45 with the first down. Down to the 44. I like the, you know, Noxie looking looking fine as always in that in that coat and tie, but the accessory with the with the hard hat was finished it off. Yeah, I appreciate I mean, it. I, I, I'm telling you, Knox, that, that finishes that outfit. You you're you are the man. It looks like they gave the guys a day off, so I, I may help them a little bit. Do a little work up here for a little bit, all right? Get the jackhammer out, bro. Got it. <laughs> Kingsbury out of the gun on first down. Tough pop. Taking it in, and can Mickey Peters get up? That was a heavy hit by Freddie Autry Lindsay, a senior, or a sophomore, rather, from yeah. High Point, North Carolina. He's up, fortunately. Yeah, he's woozy. Looked like he took that uh, jab from Frazier. And uh, down went Mickey Peters. That was a shot. Now, Mickey Peters threw a touchdown pass, or threw a pass to set up a, a score for Texas Tech earlier in the game, and he took a shot on that reception. Kingsbury on the shovel. They've got the first down. Plenty more. Inside the 20-yard line, D'Antonio Burnett finally getting to Terry and Anderson. One thing that, uh, that you know is just Mike Leach has got plenty of plays up the sleeve. And it's a draw set basically for the offensive line. Built right in there behind the big boys. And it's a safe play because if it's incomplete, it's not a fumble. It is exactly that. It's an incomplete forward pass if you don't complete that shuttle pass. Shift Henderson on the sweep. That was an audible call. And a gain of about five. So another pursuit slide by. It'll be second and five to 15. Well, for Texas Tech, let's face it, to get back into the game down by four touchdowns. They need very short scores they do and, and and i don't think it's you settle for field goals anymore down 28 this is four down territory I mean, you gotta pump the ball in the end zone no matter how many downs it takes you you can't kick it no huddle second and five kingsbury spreading them out on the wide side tough catch first and goal nice catch it back taking it in it was preston hartfield with a senior from Albert, Texas. Well, Julius Patterson just could not quite finish. Nice ball by Kingsbury, though. Very tight spiral. And, you know, you, the catch is one thing, but then make the tackle. And he didn't get either done. Catch was made, and the tackle was missed. And yards after catch went to Texas Tech on that play. Inside the five minutes to play in the third quarter. That's the only plus right now for Texas Tech to play off of. But there is plenty of time left. Will it be Henderson? <laughs> Tripped up right at the line. Second and goal, called it the five. George Anderson making the hit. You know, Texas Tech will still spread you out, even though you're inside the 10 yard line. They'll run four receivers and, and get people out of the box, you know, defensively and make you cover folks. At that time, North Carolina State got off the blocks inside well, made the play. Look how they spread you still. Kingsbury into the corner. Page is there. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Good call, Joel, because Page is 6'4". And even though North Carolina State has big cornerbacks, they don't have anybody 6'4", and just got the ball up high and said, back corner of the end zone, get it done. In coverage was Maddox, and Maddox is 6 feet. 4-inch height advantage for Page. He finished. It's not even a fade. It's just, you know, Page is in the back corner of the end zone. He just said, Kingsbury said, run the back of the end zone. I'm going to get it up high to you. You get that six foot four, four inch body and go up. And he did. Nice elevation. Freeze for the point after. Let's go, let's it is go. now a three touchdown deficit. 38-17. North Carolina State. I've seen stranger things happen, Parker. 4-10 to play. You're exactly right. And especially with the explosion capabilities that Texas Tech has and Mike Leach has got a bag of tricks you may have to pull a few out you have to deep down dig into, uh, dig down deep into that bag well we had an opportunity to get together yesterday with Mike Leach and got his thoughts on a young man who's been with him and been successful Cliff Kingsbury I think the, the biggest thing he does well is he makes the players around him better, which I think is the biggest role for a quarterback. And then the other thing, uh, you know, I, he, he's, he's really a student of the game, great work ethic, and I think he's continued to get better each step of the way. 
Well, Kingsbury has shown his toughness to us. Dave, we had him last year a couple of times on Fox Sports. Now, he took a shot at Nebraska. I didn't think he, there was any way in the world he could stand the game. He got up and he continued. Yeah, and, and I mean, he probably felt some of those hits right down to his skeleton. I mean, it just rattles your bones. But this kid, he gets up. He's resilient. He's like, uh, you know, you can't knock him out of there. He's like Gumby. He's so flexible. Great house to kick it away. Golden and Reed waits. It'll be Golden. From the one. He just had a great return. And runs up the back of his own blocker. He just slows him down momentarily. He's put down to the 24. Again, though, not great kick coverage. If he doesn't run up the back of his old blocker, he goes to the sideline. He's got a huge return. You're exactly right, and Golden has been exactly that. I mean, he's gold star in Golden's forehead today for all his contributions on all three phases, offense, defense, and kicking game. He's been special for them. Three touchdowns already. In the second half of Philip Rivers, and well, two of the three by the offense, of course. Sean Price scored the other on a bobbled snap. Now for the chips and clock. That's what they'll try to accomplish with T.M. McClendon. Burton with a tight end. Good move. Slipping inside to go past the 30 to the 33, and a gain of eight on first down. Put down by Ryan Acock. Burton's a big guy at 6'4, 260. Senior from Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Acock was in coverage. John Burton, right from word go, Acock fell down. Burton caught the ball, and Acock scrambled to his feet and pursued and made the play. But, well, you can't uh, you can't hit the turf when you're in coverage. That's hard to cover people when you're laying on your belly. Second and short, and all they want to do is just keep moving the chains. Consume five, six minutes on the clock. But oh. Oh. finally got two into the backfield. They have made for Texas Tech. Jason Wesley, the junior from Houston. A Leaf Elsick High School. Boy, that's put out some players. Wesley is uh, is known for his abilities in pass coverage as a linebacker, but that time he blitzed. How big is this third down now? Stoned him. This is huge. Third and five to give some hope to the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Now we're going against just any quarterback, though. We we're going against a guy that was number one in the nation in passing efficiency coming into the game. A false and, start. Yes, inside. Rivers is saying that Coleman, the left tackle, was brought off. There was inducement there. He's not going to be able to sell that, though. It's a good try. The left side of the line. That's a Riggs and Colmer over there, the guard and tackle. Tough microphone for our official today. You know, Rivers, though, he's been flowing. He's been in a nice flow that has that Rivers. I mean, he's, he's done a good job with this offense. And this is a, this is where Rivers makes his money, so to speak. Not literally. Figuratively, I mean, this, these are the plays, third and long. These are the plays where he steps up. Third and nine, ball back at the 25. Blitz coming. Moved again. again. Moved again. The blocking assignments called out by Philip Rivers. He was concerned, you could see. So now it's going to be third 14. You know, you, you remember Mike Singletary with those eyes? Look at Flugens. Flugens is taking it all in. The computer's clicking. Lugens is making his adjustments, and then Rivers says, I'm going to adjust to your adjustments. And Rivers is dictating protections and pointing out blitzing linebackers and, and telling McClendon who to block. And then they jumped off sides, so it was off and up. Third and 14. He would take it outside of the 34. And Rivers barking on a high read. The blitz from the outside. Rivers eludes the pressure. It's intercepted, no. Dropped to the 40-yard line. Almost taken away from Cotchery. Great play defensively, though. Excellent effort. Broke on the football very, very well. Good route recognition. What a play by Ozelio Hansen. Hansen gets, gets inside. Has the route recognition. Breaks on the ball. But the one good thing that uh, that, that uh, Cotchery did was he reversed rolls and battled him and at least knocked it down. Herbert. 
Welker backpedaling. Can he make something happen? He'll use the near side boundary and good field position across the 45. The North Carolina State failed to pick up a first down. They just wanted to chew up some clock. Minute 23 to play the third quarter. Welker has got four punt returns for touchdowns in his career, Joel. He had one this year of 72 yards, so he did establish at least decent field position for Kingsbury and company. And they need some touches for number 27 in the offensive set. He saw the ball early in the game in their first scoring drive when they led 7 0. But he has not touched it all that much in the offense since that 80 yard drive. He's averaging over 10 yards a carry. He's had a couple of reverses from that slot position for big yards. He gets it now, and they bury Wes Welker. Well, that worked early in the game, but a good adjustment is on the play. George Anderson, along with Patre Lindsay, Dr. Pepper, Big 12 Players of the Week, Cedric Benson against North Carolina. Wow. 51 points for Mac Brown's squad going up against the team he coached for 10 years. 208 yards. Yeah. Newman getting it done for Kansas State on the defensive side. Look at those return yards, 147 kick return yards as well. Good game. Now, Bobbins. On the big goal, finds Page. Flat down in the secondary in the middle of the field. Page has got enough for a first down, but what about the flag? Holding against the defense will be declined. The the play gain more yards than the penalty would, so they'll move the chains. And Kingsbury did a good job of feeling the pressure on his backside and getting away. Well, the reason for hope, of course, for Texas Tech is they do have one of the best five or six quarterbacks in the country, Flip Kingsbury. So he can get him back into it in a hurry. He just did it. A two-minute drive. As they covered 65 yards, finished it off with a five-yard pop into the corner to Anton Page. Meeks is in the backfield with Kingsbury. He's got his man available. And off target. Trying to get it to Trey Haberty, the sophomore from Richardson, Texas. Well, we've seen both of these quarterbacks, Joel. They're not known for their jackhammer feet and great speed, but they can work the pocket very well. Slide step, they've got that elusiveness, the escapability. They both have a good clock in their head. You know, they can have a sense and a feel for, oh, boy, it's about time. Some pressure should be coming my way. i got to do something. And they get it done very consistently. Second and ten for Kingsbury. Welcome to the motion man to the short side. They wanted the middle screen, and it's thrown away. There's plenty of contact all over Meeks. There's a battle going on at the right tackle position. For Texas Tech, he got his hands full, Casey Keck. He's working against Sean Price. And those two guys are, I mean, they're going at each other now. And there's there's always, you know, as a former offensive lineman, the, 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 the play in the pits, it's the game within the game. And there's some interesting matchups always at the line of scrimmage. Kingsbury, no, nowhere near his normal yards that he generates in a, in a game. Below average for him. And that's credit to these guys. North Carolina State's defense is unit. Over the middle, it's an animal. First down. Haberty. Wow. And making Hartfield take the pile down the 10 yard line. Man. Hartfield, what did he drag him about 10 yards? That was a rugby scrum. I mean, he had to have played rugby in his career because they could not bring him down. Everybody was up high, and he just gave, you know what? They, they all should give him a quarter for that ride. He should at least collect a buck 50 because, you know, he was the ride at the amusement park and just took him for a big one. Man, Hartfield just kept his legs driving, and what a play. They can't pick up a first down. It's not first and goal with the ball just inside the 11. How about that for a conversion ball? Because you know it was four down territory anyway. See, so yeah, it's going to be that way for at least protect the rest of the game. Makes the other one in the backfield behind Kingsbury. The fade into the corner for Payne. <laughs> tips. Once again, going to the guy that's six foot four. Page and, and he's a he's a tough guy to cover. Golden's nowhere near his height. So that is going to be the final snap of a huge third quarter for North Carolina State. Now, can Texas Tech duplicate that with the fourth and final 15 minutes of regulation? They're close. 
trying to make it a two touchdown game when we come back. They'll have it. Second and 10 right at the 11. After three, though, 38 17, North Carolina State. You're watching College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Serra on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Lubbock, Texas. Warm Saturday afternoon for college football. Game time temperature just around 90 degrees. Now the first snap of the fourth. A 21-point deficit for Kingsbury and the Red Raiders. Comes at the 11. It is going to be Meeks to the boundary. Can he get there? Bounds right at the two. Where there was great blocking on the uh, on the perimeter on the edge once again. Not necessarily knocking North Carolina State down, but boy, sealed them off very, very securely. Good job. Meeks got some wheels now. He can he can run a little bit. Boy, just could not quite get inside the pylon. So third and a yard at the two. Still can get the first down inside of the one. And now, only one wide receiver to each side. Meeks. Again, over to the left side, scrambles, he's in. Touchdown, Texas. Well, Texas Tech went two tight ends and said, you know what, we can be conventional. We got the big boys up front, we're gonna go two tights and hammer you. And that's exactly what they did. Didn't spread them out. So we'll play some power football and see if we can get it done. They couldn't do this, could they? Down by 28. Boy. It would be one heck of a deal if they could come back. Well, they got two quick scores. The 65-yard drive is now followed by a 54-yard drive. How big is that defensive takeaway on the fumbled uh, exchange between center and quarterback now? Hmm. Monstrous. Robert Treese almost hooked it. It's inside the upright, though. And a 14-point lead for North Carolina State. But they've lost a 28-point advantage over the last six, seven minutes. So now can they turn it back on because they were making some mistakes offensively. You're right, and, and now will Texas Tech's defense get things figured out and join in the momentum? I mean, offensively, they've, they've scored a couple of times to, to cut into that lead, and the defense has helped out. And it, it, right now, they're minus three in the turnover department. North Carolina State's forced three turnovers. Texas Tech has forced none. That's, that's, what, that's what their mantra is right now. Take the football away. Or worst case scenario, three and out, let the offense continue to roll. Special teams will play a large part in it. And we'll see on this kickoff. Last one, eight, covering 54. And again, previous only took a little over two minutes. This 93 seconds. And that's what the Red Raiders need. They can't hang on to the football a long time. Chris Murray. Going back deep, along with Golden. Golden over to the far side. Stuart Greathouse puts it. Down the middle, it'll be Golden. And bringing it two yards out. Two yards into the end zone. Indecision with a cost of the X. Now a long field and poor field position. Back of the North Carolina State, 15. Well, next weekend, start your college football weekend with the best college football pregame show on television. College Football Saturday kickoff show. Chris Rose, Hall of Famer Kellen Winslow, and the coach Artie Gigantino. They'll preview the day's play. College Football Saturday kickoff show. Saturdays, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. So now all of a sudden, some pressure on North Carolina State simply to just pick up a first down. And went three and out with a punt. Don't forget to the last possession. And had two procedure calls over. McClendon. Belton as soon as he got it by Wesley again the junior outside linebacker from Houston and the defense has uh, caught the momentum bug you know they, they see the offense has has awakened and they sc are scoring some points they want to give them more opportunities and Chuck Amato has talked about the hidden yards and field position you know they want short fields not long fields and right now Rivers and company facing long field now second and long a little more than eight Rivers out of the gun with Peterson in the back with the wide receiver. Looking underneath to the 21. Short game taken in by Sterling Hicks. 
One thing they, that you're not going to do is rattle Phillip Rivers. I mean, the guy is cool, calm, and collected, but a throwing motion that uh, a lot of people are critical of. What? It's, it, 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 it's very unorthodox. I mean, he pushes it. He reminds me of Danny Werfel. Danny Werfel threw the football like that, had a little bit of a push to his throwing motion. All he did, though, was win a national championship and a Heisman Trophy, so Rivers would take that. <laughs> And now a timeout has been taken by North Carolina State. They've only got one left for the contest. See if that is a factor down the stretch for Chuck Amato and his squad. 90 seconds into the fourth quarter. Desperado time for Texas Tech down by 14. Short three, call it two and a half to pick up the first down. Now, you remember the last time they went to a timeout, they pay it off, and they picked up a touchdown, the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Well, they reap the same dividends. Power formation over here, Joel. Motion out of it. It's empty. Rivers looking underneath. Wide open. He's got the first down. Brian Peterson and Nick Sterling Hicks instead. Oh. The sophomore from Pompano Beach, Florida. Rivers is unflappable. You know, as a coordinator, do you blitz him? Do you drop, you know, multiple into coverage? With any great quarterback, you have to change it up and not give him the same look. But, boy, it's hard to confuse him. And Hicks delivered for him. The Rivers just sorts things out so, so quickly and makes the right decision, it seems like, every time where to go with the ball. And you figure, Dave, that'll take a minimum of another 90 seconds off the clock. So that's the biggest enemy for Texas Tech. Exactly. It's, it's State's biggest ally and Tech's biggest enemy. The clock right now, you're right. From the 37, McClendon, huge hole. Close to another oh, first half. He's short by two yards. So now if they can chew up four or five minutes, they can effectively put it away. Well, once again, the, it starts with the offensive line, and you get McClendon going where he doesn't get first contact. Look, here, here's a natural seam anyway. And, and look, look at that game, and McClendon saw it. And, and look at, I could get through that hole. It's been, I mean, man, that's just, that's kind of a misalignment by Texas Tech. Somebody lost gap responsibility on alignment. And McClendon's eyes got large, like hard-boiled eggs. Second and a couple. Short side to McClendon. Breaking tackles. And finally stand him up, and he's got the first down. To the 48-yard line, Flugents pushed him back. But he gets three, first and ten. And you can now take it down. If they don't turn the ball over to about 10 and a half minutes to 10 minutes left in the game. And that's the key. Texas Tech thinking about takeaways, but boy, North Carolina State has demonstrated fine ball security all day long. I mean, McClendon wraps that ball up very, very nicely. He's not going to spit the bit. And that's what they're talking about in the huddle. Make sure you wrap the, the football up with two hands. So Tech, two timeouts on the board with one for North Carolina State. First and 10. McClendon, a little bit of a check. And Rivers trying to put the game away. He's got Peterson and overthrows him. Jose Leo Hansen trying to keep up with Brian Peterson. Ball was overthrown because there was some space there. Yep, it's hard to overthrow Peterson. He runs a 4 3 8 40. Rivers showed plenty of arm strength. You know, people talk about his motion. Look at that tight spiral, and that ball's in the air for a long way. I mean, that, that bad boy is is launched and overthrew Peterson by a solid five yards. In my mind, after watching Rivers today, he may be unorthodox, but he gets it there accurately, and he, he's got plenty of arm strength. I think he's got above-average arm strength. Josh Brown joining him in the backfield, or is it McClendon? It is McClendon. Second and ten. Dump off. Nifty moves. McClendon again in the open field. Puts it on the ground. He's got it. Texas Tech. Wow. I tell you, he did. He made Hanson miss Joel and picked up about 10 or 15 extra yards, but lost the ball. You're not the least bit happy about it either. So Texas Tech with it back at their own 28 and a prayer. And the, and the ball, you know, just, just lost it to contact. Pretty good pretty good contact by Boyd and McClendon. And, and, and just both guys whipping at his arm. It, it was the hit above the top, over the top. The linebacker coming over the top that, that kind of forced the thing loose. 
The second guy in, Wesley, the linebacker. You know, he was he was in the sandwich between Boyd and and and, and, uh, and Wesley. And Wesley pulled it out of there. Pete coming on Kingsbury in trouble. Throws it away. Man, he's lucky he didn't get a grounding call. There yep. was a man in the neighborhood. So it'll be second and ten. That stops the clock with 11:33 to play. And there is hope for Texas Tech. They've got the ball to the 30-yard line, but that time more pressure and more people brought by Chuck Amato than we've seen previously. I'll tell you, the guy that's really putting the heat on the quarterback is Sean Price, and he's checking out right now. He's coming off the football field. You see him on a dead sprint. But boy, he's been coming snap after snap off the edge. Shovel and off the back of his own man. Henderson oh, puts it into the air. It goes to one of the linemen. How about that? Toby Cecil. So, strange. It was yeah. touched by his blocker to begin with. Right. Just like it was drawn up. I mean, that's exactly how Mike Leach practiced it all week long. He said, now here's what I want. I want the shovel pass, and I want you to run into your lineman. Then I want you to lose the ball. Then I want the lineman, another lineman that's hustling, you know, after the hit, for him to come up with the football. Now, can we get that done in the game? And they, and they did exactly that, just like they practiced it all week. All right. So now the third down of the game for Texas Tech at their own 35. And Kingsbury oh. has it knocked away, trying to get it to Nehemiah Glover. What a play by Pollard. Yeah, he broke on that ball, Joel, and he went horizontal. I mean, that's just a great effort, valiant effort. Kingsbury, he, he, you know, he looked down his, his intended receiver the whole time, and Pollard just read his eyes, and Kingsbury's eyes took him right to the ball. Uh, they got to be going for it. Punny unit's not coming on. Yep, four down territory everywhere, down by two scores. I'll tell you, 10 minutes and 45 seconds to go, though. Interesting. I'm not sure about this one. You know, they, they have cut into the lead. There's still two scores down. Mike Leach, a very aggressive coach with, a men, with his mentality, and he's going for it here. Play of the game right here. Needs to take it past the 40. The Heat on Kingsbury. First down to Nicky Peters. He's got it across the 40 to the 43. Well, I'll tell you what. Mike Leach should go and buy lottery tickets right now because he's hot. He, you know, it, it, the, odds, the odds weren't with him, and they executed. It looked like the ball was deflected or, or tipped at the line of scrimmage as well by Sean Price. Now, big run. It's Henderson, another first down to the 42. Well, if it's a seven-point loss for Texas Tech, they're going to look back on that fumbled snap, snap by Kingsbury. It was returned a little bit better than 30 yards yeah, by Sean Price is the difference. Exactly, and it, it's nothing that North Carolina State did. It was just mis-execution by your center and quarterback, and that's what makes you... Gray hair or no hair as a coach as you pull it off by the roots. In the no huddle, the play called by Kingsbury at the line. And now going deep. Oh, just off the mark, trying to get it to Wes Welker. And who's with him? The shadow. The spy. We were told that Marcus Hudson, regardless of whether it was the boundary, the field side, the wide side, or the boundary, the short side, he'd be with a flip flop. And Kingsbury stands in the pocket and takes a hit, as he usually does, unfazed by it. Yeah, Hudson's uh, hit, Hudson's with him everywhere in the slot, wide, in motion. Hudson mirroring every move. Second and ten, ball to the 42 of the work pack. Oh, oh can't hang on. He was trying to get it to Mickey Peters again. His man over the middle, Manny Lawson, kept up with him. A true freshman, from Goldsboro, North Carolina, a guy they think is something down the road all-american type of status 6 5 2 10. yeah and he's got a 38 inch vertical jump joel in high school in the state uh, track meet championships he he won the 110 high hurdles of 200 meters was third in the triple jump won the high jump i mean he, he placed third in the state championship meet all by himself he was the only one that scored points for his team he's another freak they punch three on the wide side for kingsbury out of the gun it's third and ten four down territory on this side of the 50. <laughs> Going in single coverage is Page. Oh, up his fingertips. A lot of contact. Working against him, Greg Golden. Yeah, he, he, like, he likes to go to Page because of that size that Page has. Just an inviting target at six foot four inches. And Kingsbury's watching him. Kingsbury at the top, 
just lofts it up, runs the fade from the middle of the football field and, and throws a perfect ball. But there's Golden being Golden once again. I tell you, he has been uh, money for his football team. But, boy, that's that's just an excellent throw by Kingsbury. He can't go and drop the ball in his hands any better than that. And Page just could not quite secure the pick. Timeout, Texas Tech on fourth and ten. 9.59 to play. And the Red Raiders, like the Wolfpack, only have one timeout remaining. We'll come right back to Lubbock, Texas. See if Leach's luck holds up and they convert. Welcome back once again to sunny Lubbock, Texas. What a matchup it's turned out to be. But this is the ball game for Texas Tech with only 9.59 to play. Fourth and ten. Two to each side for Kingsbury. Movement. It should be a flag. No flag thrown. And now off the fingertips. Wow. Of his intended target. He tried to get it. To Carlos Francis, and there is a late flag. Roughing the quarterback, roughing the quarterback. No, wow. no offsides, but and roughing think, things were. And that was on our side, Dave. I didn't think he got back in time, the end on the near side. I didn't either. And, and North Carolina State had 10 men at the line of scrimmage. But Kingsbury, he handles the uh, shotgun snap, uh, and, and boy, that's a, that's a tough call. Looked like he was just finishing momentum, finishing his charge. And uh, Wimstad, who had two back surgeries, loves to play the game, and wasn't going to give up on football. It's called there for a tough one. Well, was it a shot to the face, though? Yeah, that's Did true. Did he go to the cage? Did he go helmet to helmet? You're right, because it certainly wasn't late. Wait, wait, wait. From the 27. Look, look at this, Joel. Ten on the line of scrimmage. Ten guys up on the line of scrimmage. There's only one safety in center field. That's how aggressive North Carolina State is on the snap. Kingsbury with time, trying to burn him. Puts it up for grabs. Is it going to be another flag? Yes, as he went. For Wes Welker, and Hudson is called. Yeah. If he locates the ball earlier, I don't think there's a flag. 15-yard penalty in college football. And North Carolina State, the last couple of snaps. Look at this. And in one center fielder back, you know, about uh, 10 yards deep, 12 yards deep, and everybody doing their thing. Here's the here's the isolation. Kingsbury going there with the football. And. He gets his head turned, but late, Hudson. But that left hand, he's just, he's, he's really dragging that uh, right arm of intended receiver Welker with that left hand. So they're, they're calling that hook in action. Left hand to right arm is the interference. So they've converted on two fourth downs. One bypass, one by penalty. And from their own 30 yard line, Texas Tech still with a shot. They've got it first and 10 of the 12, and plenty of time on the clock, 9.47. Don't forget the only one timeout for each team. It'll be Henderson. Down to the nine. Give him the ten. That's it. Gain of two. So plenty of east-west, not enough north-south. And it'll be second and eight. Mike Leach now lamenting the fact that Texas Tech, at the beginning of the third quarter, took a nap. I mean, they fell asleep. They just lost. Absolutely right. They, they came out of the locker room. They yeah. were ready. They lost their concentration. They lost their focus. And, uh, you know, now, now they're trying to just scramble to get back into it in the fourth quarter. And they put themselves in a deep, deep hole. 28 point deficit. They're trying to turn it down to seven with three straight touchdowns. Changing at the line. Shifting Henderson. And into the corner. Jump ball knocked away from the little guy. He wanted Welker again, and Welker's not a big guy at all. He's only 5'9". You know, Joe, Terrence Holtz got involved. Joel, one thing that Texas Tech does up front, they take mammoth splits. Look at these line splits. I mean, they're now th this is this is the 10-yard line. Look at the splits they take, widening those pass rushers and creating as big a pocket as they possibly can for Kingsbury. And did a good job of protecting. Holt almost made the play on the football. I tell you, he's a he's a fine fine safety. There's no question about it. He'll he'll be joining his brother in the National Football League on Sunday. Well, Mike Leach told us watching film, he's never out of position. Terrence yep. Holt. Yep. Third and eight from the ten. Will they have enough time underneath? Henderson tries to make a miss, and he's down to the five yard line. Holt. Terrence Holt did it again. Great open field tackle. One on one broke down. That's a training reel right there of how to tackle in the open field and not miss. Great play. Comes right after we mention what the other head coach tells us. That kind of respect for Holt. 
and he is the quarterback of the defense. I mean, he gets everybody lined up properly, and as you mentioned, Joel, never out of alignment himself. Knows exactly where he's supposed to be at all times. So the third, fourth down of the drive. Will it start at the five? Kingsbury looking over the middle. Now into the corner, has a man. Touchdown, Texas Tech, Mickey Peters. Joel, that all started with great protection up front. I mean, Cliff Kingsbury held that ball for a long time, allowing that pattern to develop all the way across the back of the end zone to the corner. And boy, they gave him an unobstructed vision view of the corner of the end zone. And look at that football. Couldn't be thrown any more perfectly. Absolutely outstanding touch, beating the linebacker Lawson. They got a matchup they wanted. Wide receiver or tight end Peters on linebacker. And, and got it done. And Peters is not your typical tight end. He's 6'3", 211. So he's like a big wideout working against linebacker. Now we've got clock problems once again. And this is on. The only clock that was operating. The end zone to our right. The end zone that Texas Tech just went into. Yeah, that's the a, other clock. Look at that. That's a, that's a freeze up there. I think, I think the cannon, when they shot the cannon, it blasted the scoreboard. Jeez, I hope uh, I hope they're not cutting wires or something in there. Now, Jim Knox, you know, Jim Knox may be involved. He was up in that construction site area, and he, once he takes over, Knoxy, what's the latest? <laughs> well, Knoxy is trying to make his way down from the scaffolding. <laughs> yeah. He's doing, uh, he, he's working the jungle gym right now. 809, left in regulation. And I bring up regulation because it could happen, believe it or not down by 28 at one point five yard pass to page two yard run by meeks now a five yard pass to peters well 21 straight for the red raiders i thought we'd have a shootout and, and we certainly had a shootout and you know it, 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 taking this opportunity check him out on never taking it you know he's smart i mean he he was around bobby bowden who uh you know he, he called him he said working for coach bowden was like was like working for a Pulitzer Prize winner if he was an author. I mean, he was that good. So what he did, his biggest attribute that he learned from him was to hire good coaches and let them coach. And right now he's working the officials. Well, he, he may want a call later in the game that's going to go his way, and he's working the officials right now. Say what's going to be interesting, Dave. How about the Big 12 referee for this game? His microphone has not worked the entire day. Mm -hmm. How are any of us going to know? How much time is left in this game if it's going to be called on the field by the referee? That's a great point. Here we go. Is it a seven-point lead for North Carolina State? Trees the point after. And do you believe this? It's only a seven-point lead for North Carolina State. Dave, you said it best. Kingsbury put a touch on it. He's got a magical touch, doesn't he? Will it be a winning touch? <laughs> Referee Hal Dowden was just on the hotline downstairs. Are we sure the phone's still working here at Texas Tech? Really? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things under construction here. I hope they're not clipping wires. Look at the protection here. Watch Kingsbury in the pocket. Now, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 4, 5. I mean, he's into affinity here. Look at that protection. And, and, and finally, he decides that takes a long time for that to develop. A crossing pattern across the back of the end zone. I mean, it's impossible for a linebacker to run in coverage for that long. And Kingsbury made a beautiful throw and an excellent catch. But the first thing that he did was go up to his offensive line, I'm sure, and say, hey, boys, heck of a job. I mean, I had a day and a half, and I appreciate every, appreciate every second of it. So we do know there's right around eight minutes left in regulation. But another stop is required. Sterling Hicks going back deep, along with Lamont Reed. Greathouse, the putter will kick it away. That is unofficial. 8.09 left. Line drive out of the end zone. That's exactly what Texas Tech needed. No returns because their kick coverage hasn't been all that special to begin with. North Carolina State, first and 10 of their own 20-yard line. Now what North Carolina State has to do, and in spite of the big momentum that, that Texas Tech is, is enjoying here, 
they have to say, look, if before the game we were told we'd have a seven-point lead with eight minutes to play, would we take it? You better believe it. So let's finish this. You know, we're in position to get done what we came down here to get done. Let's not get caught up in the momentum that Texas Tech is, is enjoying right now. Let's create some of our own because we're in position to finish this thing. And all they need, let's remind everybody, if they get three, it's over. Only one timeout remaining for each team. McClendon, the only one in the backfield. Can he run the football when he needs the most? Without a doubt. Now he needs to stay in bounds. He gets five, but he should have gone down. In bounds. Mike Smith knocked him out. You're exactly right. The freshman will learn that. And all he has to do is go down, you know, even if it was not by contact, because you hit the ground in college football, you're down. So they take it across the 25. See if they keep it on the ground. you got to believe they will. Although working out of the shotgun, McClendon does stay in the backfield. Moving the pocket by design, and Rivers had a man early. Now in trouble and overshoots his intended target, Cotchery. Now, did he throw that away to avoid the sack? Mm, yeah, but were there receivers in the air, and did he get it past the line of scrimmage? Yes. So, therefore, no intentional grounding. His indecision cost him, though, early in the pattern. You're right, and Hunt was all over him. Hunt was draped all over him like a new suit and uh, forced that incompletion. So now third and a little less than five. A lot of people left when it was a 28-point deficit for the Red Raiders. Those that have stuck around, they can't believe it either. Right now, kind of delirious. Rivers with Boyer and McClendon in the backfield. Then blitz off the edge. Rivers has a man wide open. It's Cotchery. Wow. Cotchery may go the distance. Needs a block. Inside the 20. And he'll be knocked out of bounds inside the five at the two-yard line. And River, Rivers going right up to Hunt and saying, you know what, you're a great player, but I just made a great play. Amazing effort by Rivers. Rivers Bird and Hunt talking blitz, about Dave. it. Man, I'll tell you that, that Rivers is a competitor, boy. Capital C in Cotchery. Gosh, what a job he did with yards after catch. I mean, the pressure's extreme. And watch Rivers, cool, calm, and collected, step up in the pocket. And, and, and buy a little time. And just before he gets takes the big lick, that's some arm strength. I mean, he really can't transfer his weight. Throws the ball 20 yards down the field to Cotchery. And, and then he makes some incredible moves. But what a play by Rivers as he steps up in the pocket. They could close it out with a score here. McClendon in the eye. He's in. Touchdown. North Carolina State. Wow, what an answer. 80 yards. 80 yards in what? Four snaps? Yeah. Man of Shevitz, that was a that was one heck of a drive. Big play is key. And uh Chuck Amato, proud of his football team and his quarterback, David or David. Philip Rivers answers the call once I keep calling my own name. That's what it is. Philip Rivers answers the call, answers the bell once again. What a player. In for the extra point to make it 45-31. Austin Herbert. So we do know the score. That's official. The time is very unofficial. A little more than seven minutes to play. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Zero. One company, countless solutions. By Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. And by Nissan at your Nissan dealer. The home. Buddy Holly and walking around outside earlier today, they had a guitarist up on a bandstand and he was sensational. And he was playing some old Buddy Holly tunes. He was great. That's where I got a hold of those sausages wrapped in the tortillas. Uh, that's strong there, boy. <laughs> I mean, you got a flavor of the area right there. Well, great adjustment, as you mentioned, by Rivers to recognize the, the blitz the off blitz. the edge. And, and, and watch him step up in, into the into the little area that he had to step up into, and throws the ball as he's being hit and going down 20, 25 yards down the field accurately. And then Cotchery after the catch. Holy mackerel, what a run. That's just a great effort by quarterback and receiver, both of them. Gold star on the forehead right there. McCann waiting for the kick, but it won't reach him. They've been going over to Bachman on a regular basis, and he lost it in the lights, I guess. Yeah, he did. The sun. Right into the sun. Yeah, sun got him. He didn't touch it, though. I don't so. think so. I think he missed it completely. Yep, they get the ball to 35. 
So don't discount as much as it is a 14-point lead. And McClendon had to be the happiest because as Kiker kicked it away, looking back over his shoulder as well, McClendon, don't forget, gave up that fumble. It was translated into the third consecutive score. Right. So now that is official on the board. 7-11 left in the game. That's an eternity. But they, you know what they said that at a UNLV game recently against Wisconsin. Yeah, that's an eternity in this kind of a shootout. Totally, it's an eternity. Man. And, and let's face it, if they get the score on side. Oh, yeah. And it's four down territory. Would they convert three fourth downs, Joel, in that last yes. touchdown drive? Two by pass and one by penalty. Time again. And they're all over Page. Flag comes out. Page was mugged going down the middle of the field by Greg Golden. That helps, you see, that helps too. That stops the clock again. No doubt. Golden made a play on the ball, but as you mentioned, with the other hand, was all over the body. So 15 on that mark off to the midfield strike. North Carolina State kind of self-destructing defensively with penalty. Uh, they have, uh, Texas Tech has executed well, but North Carolina State has allowed them to move the chains multiple times here in the last two or three drives by penalty. No, no doubt about and that. And the spot of the foul is with market. They won't give them 15. They'll give them 10 to the 45. In trouble. Throw to the feet of his running back. Good idea. He wanted to go downfield. He really wanted to go deep on that snap. No doubt. He did. He, His eyes were lit up, but you got to give North Carolina State. If, if I'm North Carolina State, I, I, I'm staying in zone zone coverage, and, and I, I, I'm staying in a two deep. I'm having my safeties help my corners over the top. But they still spread you. You know, I mean, this is their typical formation, two and two. Open it up. Give it off to your running back. And look out. There goes Henderson. Would it go the distance? No. Yes, maybe. Oh, no, he knocked out of bounds. He was knocked out of bounds. Holt. Holt Barely. Yeah. Holt got him just off balance enough. But he faked Holt out. But he lost he, he, he lost the real estate. I mean, he was just tight roping that sideline. Holt not hit him well. But he just made him step out of bounds at the, what, 17-yard line? And I said earlier, the team that's got the ball last is going to be the winner. I think it applies today. Yeah. Nice little stutter step, and Holt misses, but Henderson can't stay in. Didn't take long to go from the 35 to the 17. First in end, Kingsbury. To a little dump off for Henderson. And Henderson chopped. Or make it Meeks, rather, the other running back, giving Henderson a break, but a gain of about five to the 12-yard line. High percentage play. And really, in Texas Tech's offense, that's a running play, Joel. You know, when they check down like that to a back out of the backfield, it's like a long lateral. It's almost like a pitch out. And, uh, you know, they, that's how they get their backs involved. Second and five from outside the 12. North Carolina State. Kingsbury into the end zone for Page. Intercepted. Yes. Ooh, Taken away by Holt, who read it perfectly. How about him? Flag on the play, though. I think Page may have been grabbed on his way in. Boy, what a big penalty this would be to take away the takeaway. There's yep. a lot of contact on Page. Half the distance to the goal. First and goal. Well, well, let's see. Because it was a jump ball situation to begin with. See if anything happened. Are they calling the interference here even before the jump ball? I think they're calling Golden for, for grabbing. Yes. Yeah, Golden's got the right hand. He's grabbing Page's jersey right here, and he just separates from him. That's when the flag was thrown, well before Holt going airborne and making the play. Yeah, he tried to grab him, there's no doubt. He tried to grab him about the five-yard line and, and curtail his route. Anderson takes over on the toss sweep. He should get in. He wins. Seven-point game again if they get the extra point. I can't believe it. And they get a penalty flag here. Celebration. Looks like a celebration penalty. I saw a flag come out. Maybe a tortilla. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of corn in that, that tortilla. I thought it, there is. There, in, the, in the end zone, there is a penalty. And in the, in the Red Raiders are of Ra or Raiders. It's a penalty in the end zone. Let's see if there's going to be a celebration call. They're talking it over. Personal foul on North Carolina State. You talk about a frustration foul. Whew. 
So that's another penalty. How many penalties has North Carolina State taken in the last two offensive drives for Texas Tech? It's been a huge factor. I mean, it's, it's not only what Tech has done to, to North Carolina State, it's what they've done to themselves. They have to get themselves off their schedule. I mean, and it's been, and it's been big, big plays. I mean, it's been, you know, fourth down for first down. It's been third down for first down. And they, they've let drives continue that really shouldn't have if they hadn't been penalized. Treese's last extra point, don't forget, he almost took it outside the upright. Is it seven? Yes. So... Back to what we were talking about earlier. Only time is going to kill Texas Tech because they have not been stopped over the last four possessions. I mean, about a minute, a little over a minute, uh, exactly a minute. Didn't we say 7-11 on the clock at the beginning of that drive? They took that thing the length of the field in a minute. So you're talking about a fast break offense now. This is showtime. This is the Lakers in the open court, baby. I mean, they're just like <laughs> transition. It's transition football here. Yeah, this, this does nothing for the life expectancy, though, of Mike Leach. And on the other sideline, Man, this Giacomato. Is, this is not a, a real that defensive coaches look about, you know, going to look good uh, showing to their team. And Giacomato is just... They've traded quarters, though. I mean, a seven-point game at halftime, and they've traded third and fourth quarters. Right. Yep. One fell asleep in the third. And then Giacomato, he, he's talking to the officials. He said, look, my guys, how can they not be penalized for three quarters? And then all of a sudden... In the fourth quarter, have 18,000 penalties. How can, how can I have all those all those penalties in one quarter, guys? Come on, give me a break. That's what he's doing right now. Now, the personal foul will be assessed. There's the there's the uh, touchdown to Page. That, that was the first score of the second half. Peterson finishing off a drive, and then this is the one uh, in the in the back of the end zone that took so much time to Mickey Peters. And here we go, P uh, Henderson again. So, I mean, they've done two by pass, two by ground. So they've been effective in both areas. And Chuck Amato's still saying, come on. Do you guys keep your hankies in your pockets? You know, I mean, how many penalties are you going to throw on us in the fourth quarter today? What about an onside kick right here? Because you're going to kick it the midfield stripe to begin with because of the personal foul. Yeah, I think, look at this half. Eight penalties for 80 yards against North Carolina State. And I would venture to say 80% uh, of them have been in the fourth quarter. Because in the third quarter, they dominated. I mean, they just took control of the game at that stage, and they weren't being penalized. I, I, I bet almost all of those have come in the fourth quarter here. And I agree with you, Joel. I think what they'll do, they may try that little uh, that little pooch action, or else they'll angle a ball. Instead of onside, they may angle it and try to find a little opening in the, in the uh, at about the 20-yard line and see if they can fall on the football. The worst-case scenario, what they want to do is pin North Carolina State back inside the 20-yard line and then make them three and out and punt the ball and get good field position. They only have one timeout left, but a, a just huge amount of time. Six minutes and ten seconds in college football for, for uh, both of these offenses is an eternity to score. Yeah, they're talking it over in front of the North Carolina State bench for some reason. There was a quick conversation with the special teams coach and Greathouse, which led us to believe that maybe they would try something. And you can also put it on the ground. You can put it on the ground so it's a squib just past the first wall right, of exactly. the Wolfpack. And now all of a sudden they're moving it back to the 35. Yeah, what happened to the penalty? What about the personal foul after the touchdown? They didn't assess it on the, on the kick, so now it should be assessed on the kickoff. And they, it, they did initially, now it's being moved back. These guys have had a lot of meetings today. I mean, it's been a convention of zebras here. It's, uh, it hasn't been a clean operation for them as well as uh, either football team. I mean, everybody's made mistakes today, I think. And it's been a shootout. Bunch of yards, bunch of points, just like everybody expected. Now, what a second half it's been for Cliff Kingsbury. He was below 200 midway through the third quarter. And you alluded to the fact those aren't normal numbers for Kingsbury. As it is going to be back at the 35-yard line. So maybe they're saying the, the foul was a dead, wasn't a dead ball foul at all, the personal foul. But it was during the course of play, during the touchdown. But they didn't, I don't think they assessed it on the extra point. Well, they would, but it was declined because they oh, got the score. Oh, it was during score, the play. Right. I, I see what you're saying. It was, wasn't, I, I follow you. It wasn't dead ball. It was during the, yeah, they declined it and took the touchdown, exactly. obviously. So that had to be the case. It was not a dead ball personal foul after the fact. Right. 
last kick from Greathouse was a line drive he got a break on. I mean, it went down the sideline and went out of the end zone just once he got past the bylaw. You know what? I, I think Chuck Amato may have talked the officials into that. You know the big discussion was going on during this break with Chuck Amato? I think he was saying, was that when, when did that occur? Was that dead ball? Was that during the action? I mean, I, you know, who knows? Because we don't have the referee's microphone that we can hear, so we don't know how he called that penalty. But they initially assessed it on the kickoff and then, and then took it away and took it back. So there was definitely confusion down there on the field. I think Chuck Amato may have lobbied uh, for something and won. Reed over to the far side. Golden back there with him. And Greathouse needs a good one. And over to the far side, actually, it's Golden from the three. He had a big return earlier, looking for a seam that never opened up. And he's down around the 22, so good kick coverage. It'll be first and 10 for North Carolina State, leading by only seven. Well, next weekend, start your college football weekend with the best college football pregame show on TV. College Football Saturday kickoff show. Hosted by Chris Rose with Hall of Famer Kevin Winslow and the coach, Artie Gigantino. College Football Saturday kickoff show Saturday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Well, speaking of coach, when you mentioned Artie, Artie Gigantino, both of these quarterbacks, sons of high school football coaches, boy, those dads are proud today. Their sons are executing big time and see if Rivers can do it again. Brown, not McClendon, breaking tackles. Good job. Jeez. He wouldn't quit on the plane. He's got it to the 25. It looked like he was going to lose about three. He got away from Lamont Anderson, the senior did from Irving, Texas. Did he ever? And Lamont Anderson, now all he is is 6'2", 292. You know, that's not some little weakling penetrating behind the line of scrimmage. That's a big man. And McClendon just shucked him like an ear of corn, man. He just threw him aside. It was unbelievable. It'll be second and about seven from the 25. Rivers out of the gun. Peters in the wide receiver in the backfield with him. Trips. Well, the safety has to pick up the slot man, but he backs off completely. Rivers and thrown into the feet of his intended target right at the 30-yard line, Sterling Hicks. So the play never developed. Rivers immediately goes to his backside receivers, both of them, to get information. He said, I went front side. Should I come back to you guys? My progression didn't take me back there. Were you open or not? And both of them shrugged their shoulders like, no, I wasn't available to you. They wanted an assist, though, to stop the clock with more than five minutes to play. They help out Texas Tech. Now, is Tech going to be ready? They come up to the line almost like they're confused. 11 men on the line of scrimmage. This guy's only five yards. Now they're backing off. As Rivers lifts his foot, they back out of there. Blitz on Rivers off the end. Oh. Puts it up for grabs. It's intercepted. Raymond Pierce inside the 20. Well, I'll tell you, the guy that put the pressure on was Acock. Acock came in there, and he made Rivers roll to his left and throw back across his body. He gets the big assist on the interception. Tremendous play. I don't believe this. I mean, Acock gets the assist, and the interception goes to Pierce. Watch Acock. As he just takes the hit on Rivers, Rivers thrown back across his body, not enough mustard on the throw. First takeaway by Texas Tech's defensive football team occurs with, what, five minutes to play in the game and gives their offense a short field at the 19-yard line. What a play. What a game. Red Raiders will have Kingsbury under his center this time, and Henderson has the single. Two wide receivers to each side. What a shootout in West Texas. It'll be Henderson. He gets a seal over to the right side. Good yardage inside the 15, down to the 13. They'll say he was down inbounds, keeping the clock rolling. Nothing fancy here. Just try to take it to the edge. Look at the block receiver on defensive back down the football field, moving the chains. You know, you're on schedule now, second and four. You pick up six yards on first down in the red zone like this. You're in high cotton. Clock moving against Texas Tech, though. Four and a half to play. And now a change at the line for Cliff Kingsbury. Going into the corner for the tie. Touchdown, Anton Page. Again, and Golden can't cover him. Gold is in coverage one-on-one, -on -one and Page, 6-4, makes it.
but the legend of Cliff Kingsbury li lives on here. Look at the touch of this ball. Outside of Golden, Page at 6'4", and Airborne Golden at, at six feet and on the ground. Boy, just a tremendous throw by Kingsbury. All the way back they come if this extra point's successful. Amazing comeback. Just when you had thought you'd seen it all, not quite yet. It is tied. So it's all even in Red Raider land. Down by 28 at one point. It's tied at 45. With seven minutes left in the third quarter, it was 38 to 10. North Carolina State. And all of a sudden, a ton of people headed to the exits. Well, they're trying to get back in now, but they didn't have their hand stamped, so they can't come back in. <laughs> and how about North Carolina State sustaining eight penalties for 80 yards? I think most of those in the fourth quarter, at the end of the third and into the fourth quarter, where they just kind of self-destruct and let drives continue for Texas Tech, and, and Tech finalized those drives for touchdowns. We may have a 1,000-yards offense in this game, close to 500 for both teams when it's all done. Now, this is the second-highest scoring game already in Texas Tech history as Reed is over to the far side, Hicks over to the near side, Great House wobbles one out. Will it get to the end zone? No, and there's a huge break. Yep. We've seen that happen, and we talked about Great House getting breaks because it found the end zone on knuckleballs. This time he's not so fortunate. Yeah, and, he, and all of a sudden Rivers only about two or three field or first downs away from field goal territory. And Great House pounded the turf at midfield in disgust and frustration. Letting his teammates down, he feels, with that just hooking that kick a little bit. Hooking that kick a little bit. Look at that. This 20, is the, this in the, is the highest fourth quarter in Texas Tech history. I, I thought this was going to be a problem. Well, not when you score seven more in the next quarter than they did in the third. Jeez. They had scored 24 against TCU in the fourth quarter back in 92. Never 28, though. And now it can buy 90 points on the board. Most ever scored was their very first game ever. Back in 1925 against Wayland. And they shot about 120 to nothing. That was a seat scorer. McClendon won't get out of the backfield. Rodney McKinney belting the running back. Tremendous penetration by McKinney. Former defensive end. And, and really, when, when uh, Duckett developed and got healthy enough to play defensive end, they slid him inside. And it improved the speed and the quickness of their defensive line immensely. And you saw it right there. Great first step penetration. Inside of four to play. Second and ten for Rivers, who's changing the play at the line. Only well, one time out left for each team, don't forget. Will we go to overtime? Rivers with a quick read, and it's in and out of the hands. It may have been deflected to the line trying to get it, and yep. Acock may have gotten a piece of it before it got to Brian Peterson. I, I agree with you, Joel, and Acock on, on consecutive series, he, he was the one that forced the pressure on Rivers to make him throw the interception. Made him go to his left and throw back across his body. Acock put the pressure on, and then he deflected that one. So, being very aggressive, bringing that safety, they blitzed him uh, c consistently here in the last two series. Chuck Amato has to find an answer. Play of the day. And Golden, the only one in the backfield. With Phillip Rivers. Third and ten, North Carolina State at their own 35. They pick up the blitz. He's got time. Throwing into double coverage and overthrowing his man. He wanted Cotchery, who's not been a factor for the most part, except that big play in the fourth quarter. He had a great first half, but quiet in the second half. Hanson and Pierce converging at the right time. The Texas Tech's defensive football team comes up with another big stand. Three and out. Rivers is hit just as he starts to deliver that football. Can't quite get the accuracy that he wanted. Hunt made the, made the hit on him. Nice pressure again by Hunt. Makes him overthrow the football through before he wanted to. Now the punt by Herbert. Welker will take it. Near his own 20. 19-yard line for West Walker. They got a wall set up a little bit at the 30. Down the sideline. One more block. He gets into the 50. Stumbles, though, all the way to the 41-yard line. Oh, Do man. Do you believe this? Amazing wall created by Texas Tech. Boy, did they let Welker take advantage. Great blocking. And there was a pancake block at about midfield. Just a decleater that Welker hurtled over. There is going to be. Is there a celebration flag? No. They'll put it at the 41-yard line. Look at the block. Great block there, sealing it. Another good block here. And then up the football field, 
as you see Welker making his cuts, there's going to be a deep cleater pancake block that Welker's going to hurdle right, right there. Welker has to hurdle that. Boy, just a just a great run. Anderson wides out of the field, gets a block to the kick outside. And is inbounds at about the 37, 36 yard line. The executive producer of Fox Sports Net is Bill Borson. Coordinating producers of College Football Saturday, Roy Hamilton, Gary Garcia. Today's game produced by Mike Kelly and directed by Ken Fouts. College Football Saturday Studio Show produced by Loy Maxson, directed by Joe Whitus. Senior Vice President of Field Operations, Andrea Berry. And the Vice President of Field Operations, Karen Newman. Well, it boiled down to a field goal try by Treese. And he's thinking about it. He's saying, get me close, guys. I'll finish this thing. Actually, with two and a half minutes, oh, it's far from over. They're setting up with Henderson making a miss. He's got a first down. Now the ultimate, of course, setting it up so that North Carolina State does not touch the football again today. Coming up for some of you along our Fox Sports net. It'll be the Big 12 postgame report. And Spike Dykes is probably living large right oh, yeah. now, getting ready for that Big 12 postgame report. Tree's trying to collect his thoughts. You know, a little, little water, calm down, calm the nerves, think about the mechanics, the follow-through. Trees again. Waiting for the pursuit, make it Hender or Henderson, rather. And the pursuit sliding by. And he's got almost five, down to the 25. You know, I don't think Trees would have a problem if, if Texas Tech's offense, as you described, Joel, Eats all the time off the clock and scores in the final play of the game. I don't think it would bother that young man at all. Well, but we don't. He's getting ready, though. Coming into this contest, North Carolina State had only given up 14 fourth quarter points over their first four games combined. Henderson, he's running out of room. And good pursuit down the line, dropping him right at the original line. Maybe a loss of a yard if they kicked it without another yard. It would be close to a 43 to 44 yard attempt. Coming into this football game, North Carolina State had only given up 88 yards passing a game and 225 total yards a game. They've given up about 500 at this point against Texas Tech. I'm surprised Therese is not at least kicking into the net yet. And Therese, let's see, if it, with, with the snap here, it would be uh, about a 42-yard, uh, 43-yard field goal. His career long is 45 yards, which he executed this season. We have an injury. Well, let's Tech face lineman. it. When he hit his field goal earlier today from 38 yards out, it was good from better than 50. Right. He, he got that it. much into it. But he has been a little was dicey early. on some extra well, points. Hey, it was early in the game, too. Right. There wasn't a lump in his throat. It looked like uh, the first turnover by Kingsbury was going to be a costly one. And there, there, there you have Holt forcing the fumble that was big. And uh, here you have the fumble, the ex uh, center quarterback exchange that Sean Price took to the house for a touchdown, a defensive score that was so large. And then on the ensuing kickoff, and just another a forced fumble, recovery short field. McClendon put it on the ground in Texas Tech's comeback. And then the, the, the big one. Acock forces Rivers to throw the interception to Pierce, and uh, that ended up in another touchdown to tie the game. Three takeaways for North Carolina State, only one for Texas Tech, but it is a tie football game. Now do they gamble and put it up or keep it on the ground with Henderson? Play fake, gambling, almost making a miss in the backfield, and he did eventually make a miss. But a great job by Kingsbury to take it even closer. It looked like he was going to lose about four or five. Instead, he's got it down to the 21. So and now they kick it, and they will. It's fourth down coming up. What an ad lib. right about a 39-yard attempt. What an ad lib. Incredible footwork, though. We talked about it earlier. He's not quick. He's just real nifty on his feet. And he showed a little bit of change of direction there, and he, he does. I mean, he's got the quickest feet of the quarterbacks, the big three that Mike Leach has coached. We've talked about it before. He's got quicker feet than college, quicker feet than Heupel. He can run and he can change direction the best. But And a good job by North Carolina State. Very aware, clock management-wise, that they had to use this timeout. To, if it's a three-point game, at least they'll have a chance to get back into field goal range. 39 seconds. It comes down to special teams. We talked about how important they were, and they were important all day today, dictating field position and 
long field, short field, hidden yards. But it's going to come down to an actual kick to determine this football game. So down 38 to 10 with a little under seven minutes to play in the third. Now, Robert Trees trying to give. Texas Tech their first lead of the game since the first quarter when they were on top seven to nothing. And that was four minutes into the game. It is going to be put down to the 29, a 39-yard truck. He's already got a 38-yarder today. It'll come out of the hole to the punter, Clinton Greathouse. And it's good that it's on the left hash mark and not the right. Midfield or left hash mark is where you want to be. For the lead, and he hooked it. Hooked it. Wow. Hooked North Carolina it. State's prayers are answered. Mm. So a missed 39-yard field goal. And it looks like OT. Over time on the horizon. Unless Rivers can make a play that... Without uh, a doubt. That, you know, and that, now they get it back. Solid field position. Sure. They're out of timeout, so sh they may not want to gamble. Yeah, I wonder how Chuck's going to... You know, on the road, you know, I, I, I think that he'll play it close to the vest and, and uh, take it into overtime. I'm not sure he's going to try to do any trickery here or anything fancy that could result in tragedy. But you never know. You never know with Chuck Amato. Like he said at the at the very beginning, we're not going to play this game not to lose. We're going to play this game to win it. Three wide receivers, two on the wide side. And just popped the running back out. He's still in bounds, McClendon. He's going to play it safe that deep in his own territory. And they will go to the overtime and take their chances in the extra session. So we've seen it all, and now we're going to see some more after 60 minutes of regulation. Boy, we're looking at, uh, well, there's 90 points on the board right now, and, and there's got to be awfully close to 1,000 yards offense between these two teams, if, if not there. It's got to be close. Amazing shootout that uh, everybody thought would happen has taken place. So now we'll get the coin toss to see who has the option. <laughs> Captains will be to midfield once again. And of course, you want the option so that you can know what you have to do. And you can see what your opponent has done. And the guy that right now feels about as bad as you can feel is Treese. I mean, he, he's hoping for an opportunity in overtime to win Without the game for his football team. the outcome. Sure. And he has to have selective amnesia. Now. He has to forget the, forget the bad play and, and, and focus on the future. Well, unfortunately, referee Al Dowden's microphone has not worked all day. So we'll get ready for the coin toss. The officials need it midfield. And they're hydrated. You know, it's hot down there for them as well. Oh, it's been 100 degrees on yeah, the field. Look at that. They get the chest cooled off a little bit. Now take a little drink. Got to hydrate. Got to replace those fluids. This was everything we expected. <laughs> Well, here's the difference. This is the reason we're going to overtime. And I had mentioned Trees was hooking it on his extra points the entire afternoon, especially in the second half. You're right, Joel, and, and he did it again. I mean, he cozied it up there, and oh, boy, just just about a yard wide left. He was trying to snuggle up to that left upright and took it too far left. Yeah, last year, there was one overtime game for Texas Tech, and they lost in overtime to Kansas, 34 to 31. I think Chuck's still talking to the officials about, boy, how many flags did you guys throw on us in the fourth quarter? Come on now. My team's not that bad. How can my team execute so well for three quarters, then all of a sudden fall apart in your guys' eyes so much in the fourth quarter? Now you want to win, and then you defer, because you want the other team to go first, so you know what you need. You got Holt and Kingsbury out there, it looks like, for the toss. Guys, two guys that have played great football games, no question about it, and it's not over yet. The option belonging to Kingsbury. Yeah, he won the toss. He's saying, what do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was discussed before they even went out there. Right. 
So here we go. Overtime on its way on Fox Sports Net. Between Texas Tech and North Carolina State. No way, midway through the third quarter. We thought we were going to see overtime today. <laughs> it's incredible. It, it really is. It really is. What was it, 38 to 10 with, what would you say, Joe, a little over seven minutes to go in the third quarter? It was 38 to 10, just inside. 6.58 left in the third, and the clock was working. That was official. We'll take a final timeout, come right back, and get ready for the extra session in Lubbock. North Carolina State won the toss. That was the option for Texas Tech, which way they wanted to go, because they were going to get it first at the 25-yard line, and here we go. In overtime, tied at 45. Anderson, offset to the left of the backfield. Kingsbury hit as he releases it, and it falls incomplete. Great shot from behind by George Anderson. Man, that's uh, that's one that'll that'll bend you right in half, and you can sustain an injury on that blind side like that, but he is tough. Now after the to coin toss, or possession for each at the 25-yard line. And repeating, and everybody's used to it now, until one team comes out and either stops the opponent completely or scores with the other has had a field goal, the opposition may get a touchdown. If both get touchdowns, both get field goals, we go to the next overtime. Now, I just talked about there is an injured lineman, Keck, for Texas Tech. North Carolina State, 5-2, and two, so much more experience in overtime games. Only the second time for Texas Tech to play an extra session. North Carolina State has taken three out of their last four. They did lose their last one two years ago, though, at Maryland. And if it that does, was in double overtime, 35-28. If it does get to six possessions, if each team possesses the ball six times in overtime, you have to go for two. <laughs> so we'll see uh, We'll see if it gets to that point. Is that like a, a, a two-engine plane? <laughs> Second and ten. Out of the gun. And available, but wide of the intended target, Mickey Peters. Remember the Arkansas-Mississippi game last year, Joel, that went into the seventh overtime and, and had to go for two, and, and Arkansas knocked down the two-point conversion pass from Eli Manning and uh, won the football game. That was, whew, that was a monster. Well, now third and ten. Can they get closer for Treese? If they can't get a first down, right now it'd be a 42-43 yard attempt. And he's got bad thoughts in the back of his mind right now, Robert Treese. Or if he makes it, they're cleansed, though. Pocket holds up well. And a first down, Peters gets it. Ball to the ground, but it was caused by the ground. At the 13, first and 10. Julius Peters, Patterson finally catching up. But boy, in the clutch moments, he is gone to junior Mickey Peters. Peters limping off the field a little bit as he was taken down from behind. Pretty good job by the offensive line of sorting out the stunts and the blitz. You can see he kind of twisted that right ankle a little bit as he was taken to the turf, but Kingsbury, how many plays when he's had to absolutely make the play? Third and fourth down as he stepped up and down it. He's been immense. From the 13, toss wide side. Henderson put it on the ground. Did he get it back? I believe he did. What a break. It popped right back to him. Man, showtime. Fast break dribble in the open court. <laughs> I mean, for the for the pigskin to, to bounce that cleanly and truly is incredible for Henderson. No contact, just never had the ball, secured the ball on the pitch out. Boy, it's just, uh, you, you talk about a fortuitous bounce. Man, he's living right. Now second and ten from the 13. He took some shots at the bottom of that ball. I think they may give this play off except for a chip here or there. Although he's wide open out of the backfield, they go the other way at the 10. Welker popped at the 8. And boy, it was Henderson. He was uncovered out of the backfield. Lamont Reed makes a stop, but they lost track of him. You said it. They were locked in. Kingsbury was only going to one man, and that was Welker. Well, here, here he is again. How many third downs in, in a quarter and a half has Kingsbury converted in fourth downs? And his percentage has been phenomenal. Let's see if he can get it done again. Because Texas Tech, uh, they don't want to settle for field goal. They want to pump this thing into the end zone and, and make North Carolina State put the pressure on them to answer. So third and a little less than five. All inside the eight. A bunch of on the wide side. Timeout.
not taken, but a flag comes down. Did the play clock go down to zero? The official came in. They said timeout before the play clock expired. So no flag. They'll put it back into the pocket. Tight quarters and a real interesting formation by Kingsbury to begin with, where he stacked his two wide receivers on the wide side of the field. There's the man. He may he's obviously going to get another opportunity to kick a field goal. Worst case scenario, Robert Trees, but I'm, I'm sure once again he would not mind at all if Kingsbury could get the offense in the end zone. He'd trot out there and kick an extra point. Particularly after how his what was it? A third? They, they didn't get the, pen, the, the, the uh, timeout called in time. They did mark off five yards against uh, Texas Tech. So it's going to be third and nine. Coach Leach disputing the fact that Kingsbury got the timeout called before the, uh, the clock uh, ran down, the play clock. But he lost the argument. So now back to the 13. How long was Teresa's miss, Joel? 39, was it? 39 yards away. He had plenty of distance. Yeah, he did. It started, it started right at the upright. It was hooking. So now ball security. You've got to take care of it. If you can't get the first down, you go for the field goal. Then put the heat on North Carolina State. On third down, Kingsbury out of the gun. Pocket collapsing. Can't take a sack. He's looking for Page. He doesn't want to let the grabs. Was it a late hit? They don't get the, the flag they were looking for. And Burnett got to Kingsbury. And here comes Treese. You can't come up empty in overtime. Now Treese has to just concentrate on his mechanics. Now there are three phases to a successful kick. Good snap, good hold, and then the kicker has to execute. He is one of two for the afternoon. He is four for seven on the season. And this is going to be a 33-yard attempt as they get a player on very late. Uh, this is inexcusable. I mean, you got to know they're going to field goal team. Out of the hold of Greathouse. Can he get it done this time? 33-yard attempt on its way. And it's good. I think the guy that ran on late, the big offensive lineman that ran on late, uh, three... I think he was the guy, Casey, or Keck, who got hurt during the drive. I think he took Keck's place. Now, you know, uh, you get an opportunity to redeem yourself is all you can ask for. Snap, hold, and kick. Good snap, perfect hold. The kick is finalized. Boy, that was, yeah, good pressure off the edge from North Carolina State. Hudson almost got it. Hudson sold out and almost got his hand on that thing. Watch Hudson. Sell out. Ooh, boy, just a scope short. Well, it's Terrence Holt, who has 12 blocks in his career. But Hudson from the opposite side. So now first and 10, North Carolina State. Three-point lead for Texas Tech. So first overtime session. McClendon, big yardage all the way down inside the 15 first down. Raymond Pierce, the free safety, gets to him. Don't forget it's over. North Carolina State gets into the end zone. It is all over. Joseph Gray, the big tight end. Excellent block at the line of scrimmage. He just tied his linebacker up and wasn't going to let him go. And got McClendon to the perimeter. Tight quarters. Do they sell out on the run? On first and 10 for the 14. Two tight ends, a single to each side. McClendon again, picking his own hole to the 10. Down to the 5, he's close to another first down. Seems like, Dave, only a matter of time. And and doing nothing fancy, uh, just taking the ball and hammering it in there, power football. You know, just ran inside zone both times. And and just coming off the line of scrimmage well as an offensive line. Chuck Amato likes the physical nature of his group up front, particularly after he brought a couple of defensive linemen over there to be a little nasty playing that guard position. Second in the yard. Rivers adjusting. McClendon loses in the backfield. Lamont Anderson with a penetration, and it's a two-yard loss. How big was that play? That was huge. Uh, breakdown up front. The offensive line. Talk about a, a, a just a torpedo. And he just shot through that line of scrimmage, basically un untouched. 
and that's when you get a running back hurt. Lamont Anderson, 6'2", 292 pounds, a shot put with legs. That's got quickness. So now third and about three and a half, and a timeout is going to be taken. We saw Tech do it. Now North Carolina State will use their timeout. They had won three consecutive overtime games. 99 against Duke on the road and at home two years ago against Arkansas State and Georgia Tech before losing. They had three overtime games in 2000, went two and one. Arkansas State, Georgia Tech victories, and then a loss on the road at Maryland. They had two overtimes, 35 to 28. Chuck Amato disappointed about the, that, that run by McClendon being thrown for a two-yard loss. Now, this would be the only the seventh time in 111 years of NC State football if they do raise their record to 5-0. UMass coming up next, then the bulk of the ACC schedule. Yep, they get and right into North it. Carolina was tomahawked by the Texas Longhorns. North Carolina playing a pretty good level right now. And they got to go to Clemson, tough. Maryland got to go to Maryland, tough. They got Florida State at home, but after beating them, the first uh, conference opponent to beat Florida State in Tallahassee, that's going to be tough. But boy, he'd like to be unblemished going into that Florida State game with Chuck Amato, but tough, uh, tough road to hold there. Now do you gamble that you put it up or just give it to McClendon knowing you've got a chip shot field goal to go to the next overtime. I think you get Rivers out of pocket, give him a run pass option. Change the launch point a little bit because they're going to be blitzing up the middle on him. The toss sweep to the short side of the field. McClendon's got the first down in. Close to the top. Well, he's in. North Carolina State wins. Fitting though, it was T.A. McClendon because he carried so much of the load all day for the Wolfpack. And I, I tell you, once again, the big tight ends really came through for North Carolina State. And they, they blocked so, so effectively. Joe Gray once again securing the edge for, for McClendon. So just inside the pylon, McClendon got there from eight yards away. Yeah, good luck to you. Thank you, you two. Your kids never, ever, ever quit. What you said in the paper? Yeah, to check them out, that was interesting. You kids never, ever, ever quit. Neither did his. Both these teams played uh, with a lot of heart. And McClendon, man, he has got a bright future ahead of him. Nice look. Look at the tight ends right there. Double teaming and just washing everything to the edge. And McClendon taking advantage of that. That's just power oh. football. Tight ends right here. Oh. Double team. Rub to the next level. McClendon stay in bounds. Take it inside the pylon. And the, just breaks the plane. What a play by McClendon. As nice you block. said, initials TA for touchdown anytime. He scores the game winner. It was his third, make it his fourth touchdown run of the contest. As T.A. McClendon is our Dr. Pepper player of the game. Phillip Rivers, also one of our players of the game, throwing for 301 yards, 20 through 32. Rivers and Kingsbury talking to each other at, uh, at midfield, congratulating each other on a tremendous performance and a lot of mutual respect there from two outstanding quarterbacks, outstanding. Boy, what, what a game. What an effort by North Carolina State and yep. Texas Tech. And partner, I will not forget this. After being down 38-10, to 10, Texas Tech, as Chuck Amato said, your players never, ever quit. You can pick up on that. Yep. When he had his conversation with Mike Leach. Don't forget next Saturday, more college football, 1130 a.m. Eastern College Football Saturday kickoff show with Chris Rose, Colin Winslow, Hardy Gigantino, and Pac-10. Pac-10 matchup, Oregon State and USC. And for some of you now, the Big 12 postgame report is coming up next. College Football Saturday has been a presentation of Fox Sports Net. Now for Dave Lott and Jim Knox. I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. An unforgettable one taken by NC State on the road.